So Connor was like, it's 20 minutes home on a, on a comfy it's taxi. Quicker, so then we get in the taxi, taxi's driving fine. And then just some random police officer just walks out onto the street and kind of flags us down. Four, like, four policemen surround this yeah. like old, poor old man. Yeah. And I asked the taxi driver, I'm like, uh, something wrong? And he's like, <laughs> I was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash Taste. I am your host once again, Gant, and with me are the boys, as That's per us. usual. Yep. How are you boys doing? Good. It's the first <laughs> week we've skipped of recording a Trash Taste. Yeah, mm -hmm. it felt weird. It felt like my, it, it felt weird, like, because normally we, re we record on Tuesdays. People probably figured this out. Mm. Like, I don't know how you figured out, like, tra some people have figured out the entire Trash Taste schedule. I think we <laughs> mentioned it in passing. Yeah. And, and what we think is a passing comment, people, yeah. like, remember. I, I remember <laughs> I got a tweet as well. I was randomly checking Twitter, like, right before we're about to start, and someone tweeted at me saying, like, what are you going to talk about today, Joey? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> where are you? <laughs> You're watching me? Yeah, and people have figured out like some, like the recording order as opposed to like the airing order yeah. as well. There's probably like a watch <laughs> order, the official trash taste watch order somewhere on Reddit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because some of them get mixed around, right? Yeah. Right. Of sponsors and whatnot. But yeah. in general, you could figure out based on who's sitting where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Normally. In Normally. general. Unfortunately, Gaunt doesn't have a guest today with yeah, him, that's, which that's I'm kind of sad about. Tell. I'm a little yeah. sad about that, Gaunt, not gonna no, lie. Um, this I, is my second podcast in a row without a guest. 2021 is different. It, it feels good. It feels like a weight's been lifted off my shoulder, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Just I'm, suddenly, I'm, I'm just, just suddenly calling all I guess. No, I'm just, I'm just here. I just got the space by myself on the table, and it's just good. It's good to be on the hosting side. I, see, you're lucky, right? That you weren't fucking hosting with Chris because he kept making me down things. So I was sitting next to him. I was like, go on, go on, drink it, go on. <laughs> to be fair, you're a pussy drinking that sake. Yeah, I wouldn't make you down. Yeah, I would have yeah. done the exact same. That sake well, tastes yeah. like shit, and you know I'm not gonna be forced to consume something that tastes like shit. <laughs> Unless it's for a challenge and I lose, <laughs> then it's my fault. Right. So, how are you enjoying your Christmas holiday, boys? Well, that's when we're recording this, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's when we're recording preface, this. Preface, we are recording this during Good. the Christmas holidays. It's still we've, 2020. We've, we've, we've had episode. our Christmas episodes, but mm. uh, we are enjoying our Christmas holidays right now, even mm. though we're still technically working. I took two days off. And then I was like, right. A whole two days. Back back to it then. Back to YouTube. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I, I really, I get, even like going one day without YouTube, I'm like, fuck, I want to do something. Yeah. Fuck, I want to make something. Yeah. I want to entertain. I want to be a clown. I don't know why. You're a clown every day, it's all right, man. I think, yeah, there's probably some deep <laughs> insecurity that happened during my childhood that makes me strive to want to entertain. I don't yeah. know why, but yeah, I don't know. It was nice, it was fun. I, I, it's nice having, I think the difference between like a holiday that is everyone's holiday mm. yeah. and one that you set for yourself is that when it's like a, like a national holiday, you're like, well, fuck, I have to, I guess. Like, yeah, 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 you're yeah. like obligated. Yeah, yeah, but then sometimes you're, you're, you're not, your head space isn't in it. So you're like, man, I kind of want to take a vacation, but like, I don't want to. But then when, if you do it yourself, you hype yourself up for it. You're like, I'm taking yeah. this time off. No mm. one's going to tell me what to do. But on Christmas, you're like, fuck, I kind of want to like, I don't want to like make a video. I want to fuck around. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is about the Christmas holidays. I've, well, I've always ended up working during the Christmas holidays yeah, because same. I've had my yearly videos that probably won't happen this year, but that's probably, that's mostly what I'm working on during the Christmas holidays. Um, mm. And then I realized that, you know, as YouTubers, you need to take a fucking break, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, so. it feels, I don't know what it is, but do you ever get, you know, sometimes we take breaks during the weekdays, right? Mm. To us, we don't like, weekends don't technically exist, but I've found that taking breaks on the weekends feels a lot better than taking breaks in during the weekdays because it just feels nice when you know yeah. that everyone else in the country and is, nice. is on a break as well. You know, well, well except for Japan people. where- Yeah, <laughs> yeah except weekends. in Japan where Christmas day is just a regular working no, day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also weekends are a suggestion to stop working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not enforced. Every holiday is a suggestion <laughs> yeah, to yeah. stop working, let's be honest. Crazy. I, I, I went up to uh, to the north of Japan for right. about three or four days to go see Chris. Yeah. Um, and that was really nice. There's so much fucking snow this year. Did he year. make you drink shitty sake? Uh, no, he made me drink good sake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and also- That's, I had, an, that's an oxymoron for Connor there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also it was the first time ever I did like a proper Japanese Christmas, AKA KFC. How was it? It's just KFC in it. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just it's exactly what I thought, it's man. It's just chicken. Like it's, <laughs> it's just like a trip to KFC. Although it was kind of weird because Chris had to schedule it like, or book it, book KFC. Booking KFC. Mm. Yeah, we had to book what, KFC. What does the world come to? Like man? two, two or three weeks in advance. Right. And it's also weird. It's not just like a, 
it, you not only have to book it, but you have to book like a day and time to go and pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's like not only do you have to come in on day on a certain day to a certain store, but it's like come between a two to three p.m. time bracket. Right. And this, and we went there when there was just like a group of about maybe like five or six families just lining up to get their Christmas chicken from the Colonel. Oh. I would rather die than line up for a kiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, you know, it was like, what? We got like a full bucket of like just a bunch of chicken wings. <laughs> as, as you do at yeah, KFC. <laughs> bunch of chicken. But also at the bottom of the bucket, there was like this kind of Christmas cake or like Christmas pudding. Right. I don't know. Cause I don't think anyone had a slice of it, right. but it, it was at the bottom of the thing. And we're like, oh, that's, little weird that it's just been sitting underneath this like greasy, greasy chicken. fucking chicken. <laughs> That's and no way you'd want to put a cake. No, man. it was the yeah. last thing we were expecting at the bottom of the, the bucket to be fair. <laughs> and uh, it was like 5,000 yen for it. And it could feed maybe about three or four people. You paid 50 bucks for KFC yeah. on Christmas. Yeah. Oh my God. Three I mean, I did people. it, Chris did. You could have had a nice <laughs> roast dinner for that. Oh no, we ordered other food as well. Okay, good. But we good, were good. like, but just because it was the first time for all of us, we've yeah. never had a Japanese Christmas before. So we're yeah. like, you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. And uh, wouldn't do it again, to be <laughs> honest. It's just it's just KFC, isn't yeah. it? Cause, I, you go wrong. Yeah, Cause the thing is like, this is I think the fourth year that I've been in Asia celebrating Christmas. Mm. And I got to say, I, you don't really understand the entire, the entire like hype behind this, uh, the, the, the Christmas spirit, you know? Yeah. I, I thought that was just like a, Bullshit. I thought that was just a like fucking meme. It's you just know? a marketing ploy, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, did, I didn't understand that until I started spending Christmas outside of, you know, where, you know, countries that normally celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, you, you can do a lot of things to make it feel Christmassy, mm. but, Having spent a few Christmas Christmases in Asia, I kind of miss that Christmas spirit because yeah, there's there's a few that. things you know you can put on the Christmas songs and you can do every you know put up the tree, but there's just something missing. And I can't mm. put my finger on it, but it just doesn't feel fully Christmassy. Yeah, I, th- I, I think that. it just has to do with the fact that at least in Japan, Christmas is not a family thing. It's, yeah, it's like a romantic thing. Yeah. yeah, and also everyone's working, so it's yeah. like yeah, yeah. Like I got a delivery on like as we were having our roast dinner and it was like the least, it was like the immersion breaking Christmas <laughs> right. moment where- Simulation where, ruined. Yeah, yeah. I had an Amazon package and I was like, this is not Christmas. That's the door on your red hat. <laughs> like I, yeah. ref- I, I refuse to have this. <laughs> wine, wine in hand. Yeah. yeah, Christmas simulation over. It was yeah. like that Rick and Morty episode where you're just trapped in an alternate, like <laughs> like this this like reality. Yeah. I, is it like to me, Christmas is like going back and reluctantly having to talk to family members about like, oh, I do YouTube, you know, this is what I, yeah, get, yeah. I get naked online sometimes. Yeah. Like, yes, I make this much per year. <laughs> Thank you, uncle, for asking me for the seventh time. You're, you're investing, right? In a pension, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> but no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It felt it felt odd because I feel like normally uh, I didn't I didn't appreciate Christmas that much because mm. I didn't realize that it was a really good way of like in my head at least. I don't know if this is because I've been this is how I taught. It was like this is the end of the year. Yeah. Mm. Now now go and restart it. And, yeah. and then build up to all of this again. Because it was, it was, it's not just Christmas. It's that period between Christmas, Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. just like the blank period. We don't do where, anything. Where it's just like, what rules, what what are the rules? Nobody knows what's going on. Are the buses running? I don't know. Are the yeah, trains yeah. running? Are shops open? It's fucking anarchy. And I love that period because yeah. it's- it, Google, it, how, how long can I have leftovers for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many Christmas dinners yeah. can I eat? Yeah, that's, that, that was like living in England. That was like, one of my favorite parts of the year. Mm. It was just, it was just, as you said, like the reset of the right, year. Right. Yeah, it was like the entire, the entire society was just kind of goes into cool down. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Whereas here it's like business as it's usual. Just business as usual. You like supermarkets out. and convenience stores are open literally 24 seven, even mm-hmm. on New Year's day. My mom won't shut up about KFC Christmas to me. She's fascinated by it. She's like, <laughs> I heard they have KFC for Christmas. Is it true? And I'm like, yes, they do, mum. It's like, wow, how crazy is that? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it is bizarre. When it, you think yeah, about it, it is weird. It's like, you know, just I, all, I, all the things that Japan has no interest in from like the West, right? Yeah. We, we bring our finest things. They're like, no, 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 none of that, none of that. And then suddenly the Colonel rocks up and he's like, listen, how about, let me pitch you this. Y'all like grease. <laughs> how, about, how about, let me take this absolutely nothing to do with Christmas food and somehow make it Christmas food. Who did like, oh my God, like how did, how do they pull this off? Like, I'm sure someone knows the history behind it, but like yeah. to me, even if you explain to me how it was done, yeah. how the KFC marketing department did this. I yeah. mean, I explained it to you last time. Time, right? Yeah, but even then, it, I still doesn't make sense to me. Oh no, it's d- like because- I researched it and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, it was like the marketing heist of the century. I yeah. swear to God. Like I, I swear in Japan, like just normal marketing things, just, they just don't care about. They're like yeah. advertisements everywhere. 
don't care about that. Oh, yeah. oh, there's a collaboration where I can get my favorite character poorly printed on a latte. Oh, well, a hundred bucks, hello. When you, that when drives you see, me insane, dude. When you see it on paper, it just sounds like a great pretender episode. It's just like, <laughs> it, it is. It's, it's just like, how that, do they pull this off? This, this is like Heist <laughs> 5. That, this is like the OVA episode, man. When they sell Christmas to the Japanese, <laughs> this, I'm just it like- literally, like it is. It's bullshit. It's like some Ocean's Eleven shit with every marketing department. And like, they, they, they do collaborations with stuff. So this is a really common thing in Japan where yeah. they don't just market things normally. You can't mm. just have adverts. It's like, you have to collaborate with businesses. Yeah. Like I went to the supermarket and I saw or like washing detergent. There's like a Bungo Stray Dogs collaboration. Oh yeah, we like, got one with Levi on it. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, okay, Levi, that makes sense. Yeah, But yeah. like some shows it's like, why? Why does Bungo Stray Dogs have a collaboration with washing detergent? To be fair, it it, it works. I'm, it, I'm a weeb, it works. Yeah. I see, I see like, but, I see Evangelion. I see Asuka's face plastered on, plastered on some coffee. I'm like, I need no, that coffee, No, no, man. no, no, so this is why I hate it. Because to me, right? It, you don't go to a fine dining like restaurant, for example, right? Yeah. And yeah. They, they draw a fucking smiley face on your hamburger. <laughs> You'd be insulted, wouldn't you? You'd be like, no, 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 no. Where's my steak? Why is there a smiley on it? This is the way I see stuff. And like, if you put like characters on it or you put like, it's fucking smiley faces. I hate it when Disneyland does that, by the way, when they put fucking smiley faces on your food. It's like, what is, is my food a joke to you? Yeah. I want to eat a fuck. Okay, never mind. I'm going to get off for him. But like, to me, you're making the product seem more childish by putting stuff on it. So when I see these collaborations, like most of the time, yeah. with like, especially with the animes at the cafes, I'm like, this is all disgusting. Right. You're selling me a $3 latte for 10 times the price. I mean, I feel I'm, like, I'm offended. I mean, I feel like it's just, it's it's very similar to what they do in the West with celebrities, but like, you know. You don't, you don't get like a Kim Kardashian latte. Um, Didn't Travis Scott just do like a fucking the epic McDonald's collaboration meal. with McDonald's? Yeah, and wasn't, they, and yeah, wasn't but, that insanely yeah, but, like successful yeah. as well? Yeah, but wait, okay, first of all, I'm near certain, correct me if I'm wrong, they didn't plaster his like face on it. I'm pretty sure they had like a specific menu that was the Travis Scott meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Travis, it, it Scott, Travis like, Scott meal. But it didn't have like a menu. face on it. Like I, I ordered, uh, I went to the Promised Neverland uh, collaboration thing mm. and there was a cafe and you could get one of the characters of the Promised Neverland printed mm. on your latte. And I thought, okay, fine. Yeah. It's $10 by the way, yeah. when I add that, which yeah. is yeah. fucking ridiculous for a yeah, sub but with, with stuff like that but, though, you have to understand that the fans will pay any amount of money right. for that one photo, right? Right, right. Yeah. So then I, I, you know, I, go, I go to have it and yeah. I go to drink it. And then as I drink this latte, like this film of like the plastic <laughs> shit that they printed it on yeah, yeah, goes yeah, in yeah. my mouth and I'm like, <laughs> like, God, this is disgusting. It's vile. And I, I don't have to peel shit off my coffee to eat it. So I'm, I'm here scooping it out, ruining this picture they printed on it. Yeah. yeah. And I just ended up hating all of it. I don't care how much of a fan I am of something. I don't want that shit printed on my food. Oh, I mean, drink. that's kind of on you then for going to that cafe, <laughs> right? Like. You could have easily just gone to a Starbucks, right? Yeah. Well, because the thing is, if you go to the exhibition or whatever, you go to these things, they're normally not that like, there's like enough there if you're mm. a fan, right? But yeah. then like you have to, you have to obligatory go to the gift shop on the cafe because you know, yeah, you, of course. you yeah. have to. And you know, the gift shop sometimes has some good stuff, but some stuff that I don't care about, like they're obsessed with making coasters of characters. Yeah. It's 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 not just the coasters. I've noticed that as well, because it's, they're, they're putting gacha into it as yeah. well. Yeah. It's a wine box of yeah, coasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, so if you want to collect the character you actually like, you got you to buy more shit, right? Yeah. You got to buy an, an extra meal. Cause that was exactly the same thing as when I went to the Fate Museum as well. Scams, man. And <laughs> Scams. It's like being a kid all over again with the, the Happy Meal toys. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I remember one time I, I like, I really, they, Burger King were doing this collaboration with like SpongeBob toys. And I was like, mom, listen, this is the third- I need to go destroy This my is boy. the third Patrick star I've had, mom. Can you please go and do like a Karen thing and get me the, the other toy? And she yeah, was like- Yeah, my, my parents used to do that all the time. She, like, would, she would always go up and ask, but sometimes they'd be like, no. Really? Yeah. I've never heard of someone saying no. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. They're usually That's just like, whatever, I don't get paid enough to yeah. fuck it. <laughs> yeah, out. exactly, right? And it's like, I don't control the gacha, I just fucking <laughs> give it to you, I don't care. I get paid $6 an hour, I'm just giving it to you. But yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of the collaboration cafes. I just feel like you don't really get that good of an experience of the show. I feel like a collaboration cafes are a bit- Shit. A bit tacky, it, a bit tacky. Shit. It's No, shit. yes, it's, it's tacky. Shit. Like. I, I feel like most anime cafes are like that. I've never been. I've met, never been to like an anime cafe and been impressed by it. Because no. it's it's like you go in this room that's like a normal sized cafe, and you're like, oh, they've just plastered paintings of the characters in the shows mm. on the wall. Yeah. Wow, look at it's that. It's like they don't even get creative with it. Like I, I would say I've been to quite a few because Aki likes to do videos on yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say the only I've only ever been to two collaborative cafes where I was just like I would go back, and that's yeah. the Pokemon Cafe and the Kirby Cafe. 
But that's just because Nintendo has just so much bigger of a budget yeah. Yeah. that yeah. they can afford to get a little more creative with it, right? Yeah, yeah. there's so many of them. You go and watch like a YouTube video of someone like going to a cafe mm. and it's like, you could see these YouTubers desperately trying to get like seven minutes out of this mm. cafe. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just like, it's literally just paintings on a wall. Yeah, I went yeah. to the Weathering something- With You cafe and that shit was so <laughs> it's fucking lame. It's cause it's the same formula every yeah. time. Yeah. And you've, if you like, if you come to Japan, come to like one anime cafe and then realize that that's, that's the experience for every cafe. Yeah. You know, that you, you, the way I see it is that you come once as a tourist and you're like, that was cool. Yeah. And then you just don't go to any others yeah. because they're all the same. Which all- Oh, go, go. oh no, I was gonna say like, also how they get you with all these like anime cafes is that they're, they're only open for limited amounts of time, right? Because so they, there's would, they a wouldn't sense fucking of, make money. If yeah, yeah, there's, yeah a, there's a sense of urgency where it's like, oh, the Promised Neverland cafe is only open for two weeks. Yeah. Well, I mean, I watch Promised Neverland, so let's go. <laughs> and then you go and you get disappointed and before you can file a complaint, it's it's gone. The food yeah. was vile as well. Oh, of course it is. It's all microwaved food yeah, or whatever. Yeah. The Kirby cafe though had some really good food. Okay. I've, I've I was n- like, I, I was like, I was actually like, wow. I've never I would heard actually someone be like, you must try this souffle. <laughs> you must, you must go to the Square Enix collaboration cafe for the best. It's like, because no, because it, it's not like going to the JoJo bar where there was obviously like a fan of JoJo who mm. like right. personalized these cocktails and these They're drinks. Yeah. It's a bunch of corporate. Bar. It's all sponsored. It's, it's all corporate <laughs> businessmen stamping like, mm, yes, collaboration. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, can yeah. we do? Coasters. Let's print the character on a latte and put some anime posters up, yeah. and then sell a bunch of clear files. I realize you're probably like, <laughs> r- like breaking so many dreams right now by explaining how shit they are. Listen, yeah. if you come here on a on like a visiting, you'll probably find it interesting if there's a show you really yeah. like. But in general, but ninety percent really of them are really lame. Yeah, really like like the cafe is always the lowest point to any like big anime event because I went yeah. I went to the Fate Cafe, but that was the Fate Cafe in the Fate museum and the museum, the right. exhibition actually was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause you, you got to see the entire fucking history of this franchise, like of not just fate, but like the entire like type moon universe and everything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And the see that's verse. cool if it's like a, like, cause I went to the Konosuba cafe, yeah. but that was in par with the Konosuba movie. Yeah. So you, mm. you can only go to this cafe if you bought tickets to the movie. Yeah. So that was like, oh, okay, you know, it's like a little bonus thing, but yeah. I wouldn't go all the way to central Tokyo <laughs> to go to a fucking corner super no, cafe. No, no, like no. it's just not worth it. Like I, I definitely wouldn't recommend going to any pop-up cafes. If something's limited no, no. time, then they have not put effort into that. No, no. Dude, the, the, the best cafe I went to is actually like the one I made a video on, which is like the 3D latte art. Yeah. That cafe is so fucking good. I went to suck your own dick there. Dude, just like, yeah, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm gonna say the only good cafe I've been to is the one that I made. Yeah, a yeah, well, no, well. cause I wouldn't make, I would, I make a video on if I didn't think it was good, right? Like, yeah, but that again, that's like a permanent cafe. That's right? yeah, 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 that's yeah. bad. Cause you can literally, the best part about the thing is you can take in like anything that you want. You're like, make it 3D. Yeah. And yeah. like, they'll find a way to do it. It's so fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. Also that guy on Twitter shit posts like crazy. <laughs> the, the owner is yeah. so good. So funny. Yeah, that's the thing is like, again, like again, the reason why I like the Pokemon cafe and the Kirby cafe is so good is because they're permanent. Yeah, they're always so there. So every, right? every season sure. they're like, oh, we can bring out something a little bit yeah. more experimental. If it doesn't work, take it out. Yeah, yeah. People N- still Nintendo are really good at doing like, I mean, have you seen the the, the new uh, theme park they're releasing? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, opening yeah. February, right? My yeah. God. Oh, I, I saw really that, I saw a picture of that and I, was, I thought, wow, Legoland's really improved, hasn't I, it? I, Cause I, I, I didn't think it was real at first. I usually hate amusement parks, but oh, no, I'm going. the first time I'm like, yeah, I'm going. Well, because you got, you want to go now before t- it opens up to tourists. Right. And it becomes, yeah, 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 exactly. It's going to be hell. But knowing so Japan, like- it's going to be another fucking lottery to get those tickets. <laughs> oh and I God. fucking hate that. Have we talked about that? No, I don't think we've talked have about you, that. You, okay, so I watched the video of, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Shigeru Mimoto, uh, yeah. like yeah. giving a tour of it. Mm. And you get like a, a bracelet that you can like hit shit with and like there's like keys and stuff. Dude. Really? Dude, it looks badass. Dude. Yeah. Like I felt like a 10 year old watching him like talk about it. I'm like, yo! I saw, I saw a Japanese YouTuber who got like first access ever as a oh YouTuber. God. But he's wow. also been, it's Hikakin, the of Japanese course. teacher. Oh, of course, of course, but of course. he's been sponsored by USJ and Nintendo in the past. Yeah. So it's less well, he's like- literally like Japan's like YouTuber. Oh, Hikakin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because one time the, <laughs> like I had a policeman that was asking me like, what do you do? And I was like, YouTuber. He's like, oh, like Hikakin. Like, no, <laughs> not like, like Hikakin. I'm like, yeah, Hikakin, man. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, like Hikakin and YouTuber are like synonymous. Yeah, 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 yeah pretty much. Like, strange. But uh, yeah, with the fucking, we've never talked about like, yeah, the, the lottery, lottery, system, lottery system, right? So oh, this God. is how you get tickets in Japan, basically. Yeah, you want to explain this it? This is better than scalping. Uh, scal- scalping? 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 Yeah, what, scalping? Scalping is people who buy a shit ton of things. And, and then just jack oh, up the prices. Then, oh, I yeah. mean, no, people do that too yeah. here. I mean, it, it's just, it's, to stop it, it's in theory to stop that from happening, right? right. 
But like, for example, the when the Olympics, for example, uh, we don't know if that's going to be happening next year. But uh, when, oh, when they've the, already announced that it will be, yeah, yeah. we'll see. I reckon it'll happen no matter what. But it'll be yeah. interesting to see how they'll do. Yeah, it. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. But like with the Olympics, for example, they did a lot. It's so dumb. So they do a lottery that you enter. And it's like a lottery to get a certain amount of tickets. So this is how we did it. So like uh, when I went to the Persona 5 uh, concert, yeah, it was a lottery system, but it was really weird because it was like, you go into the lottery to get a certain number of tickets and they're different lotteries. So it's like, if you want to go just by yourself, you enter the lottery to get one ticket, but there's <laughs> another lottery to get two tickets or three tickets or four tickets. And just because you enter into one of them, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna get those tickets. Yeah. But then what it is, is that you might think, oh, okay, so if you win the lottery, then you just get the tickets, right? No, you get the right to purchase the tickets. <laughs> Japan have figured out a way to gatchify every <laughs> process possible, man. Yeah, I mean, it's also, I also saw that you could get some of the tickets, but you could only be entered into some of them if you bought like a Panasonic device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. they were like giving away some of the tickets to go. I was like, what the fuck? And also, and also the mess. shitty thing as well is that like, say you enter the lottery to get four tickets, right? But you're not sure if you're gonna get it. So yeah. you want to enter multiple times, but here's the kicker. For, say you win twice, yeah. right? In that four ticket lottery, you're forced to pay for those eight <laughs> tickets. You can't back out of that shit. <laughs> like you're actually forced. Like even if it's only four people that you're going with and yeah. you just did another lottery for backup, you have to buy eight tickets. It so just dumb. it just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, I I, I understand in theory why they do it, yeah. but I, I feel like this is this this is like trying to put out a fire with cooking oil. It's, you know what I mean? Just it's just the most roundabout bullshit, time consuming way to do it. And I guarantee you, Nintendo Land's gonna do the same thing. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo haven't got the best rep at the moment. <laughs> They've been like fucking everything up. <laughs> I Thanks. can't believe that, man. Nintendo and DMCA are like that right now. Yeah. yeah. yeah with the stuff with the Smash tournaments, did you see that as well? That was a while back. Though. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Did you not see that? No, I didn't see that. Basically, they like just uh, cease and desisted a, a big tournament that had been going on for a while. Mm. And everyone was like, the fuck? Because they were using, um, um, so the, obviously the netcode of the Switch Smash Brothers is pretty garbage. Yeah. Mm. So f people fan modded their own version of it that's much better. Mm. Oh, okay. It's called like Slippy or something. And they didn't allow that. And because they were gonna use I love that how it's one. called Slippy. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it like actually runs smoothly because Nintendo online sucks yeah. uh, and always has sucked. And the fact that they pay for it is kind of a joke. Yeah. Um, Cause you don't really get anything out of it. Like it's awful. It's so bad. Like no. I love Nintendo, but God damn is that online suck. Yeah, they really yeah. need to fix that shit. Um, and so they, they cease and desisted them. <laughs> and then they were also <laughs> sponsoring a Splatoon tournament, right? And guess how much the, what, guess what the prize was for the, so they were giving the prize because yeah, Nintendo okay. like sanctioned event. Yeah. They, they're giving the top prize for a team of five versus five was a $25 Nintendo eShop gift card. <laughs> oh my and God. then, oh my God. And then <laughs> they, they, they canceled the event because one of the teams had something like free smash or something. <laughs> It was like, or like had something along the lines of like Nintendo, oh yeah, like to, for solidarity with the Smash Bros. I love community. that the top prize, you can't even pay you can't for even split, Splatoon. You can't even yeah. split that You can't shit. even pay for oh the game God. your fucking tournament is. It's just funny because it's like, for some reason, Nintendo just wants their fucking IPs to die. Like, I don't get it. Dude, Riot Games is sweating, man. They're just like, oh, there's a new competitor in the esports scene <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's wild to me because you just see the like the complete difference again. Like you said, riot, right? You, yeah. And you have the fucking what is it? The Baron pa Red Bull power. <laughs> the play. Red Bull yeah. power. The, power the play. Mercedes drive to victory. Yeah. Like they're fully <laughs> embracing like becoming sports. And Nintendo's like none of that. The Nintendo's state, like the party state, games. The State Farm analyst desk. <laughs> God, I remember watching Worlds this year, it so and funny. it was so weird just seeing like literally everything monetized. It's literally like watching <laughs> I American, say that drinking my G yeah. Fuel, out of my G Fuel cup. Thank you, <laughs> thank you G Fuel for sponsoring Trash Taste. They're mean and I said it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is, it is funny how it's become like American football where like every single part of the game is like yeah. sponsored. And then you, again, you have the complete opposite where Nintendo's like, yeah, we don't want to put any of this. Cause, yeah. Cause Nintendo could make money off it if they really wanted to. They want to be in charge of this, but yeah. they just have no interest in it. No. I mean, you know, we've-, we've I mean, they're probably it. already making enough as is or well, that's the, that that's the Japanese mindset, isn't yeah. it? They're yeah. like, we've made enough doing yeah. it the way we like. Yeah. We don't want to make more money. Yeah, but yeah. like, I guess, <laughs> which is so odd for a, a business to to say. Because I think what was it like last year? Nintendo was the most cash rich company in Japan. Yeah. 
which is insane. I, I, I think there's something is slightly wrong with that statement. It's not that they don't want to make more money because I, from like my I'm experience sure. working with Japanese oh, money, sure. uh, Japanese companies, they want to make as much money as possible. Yeah. They, but they only want to make as much money as possible using the methods they that like. Yeah. They it's like. not that they don't want to make money. It's that yeah. they don't know how to make money in other ways. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Because they're like esports. E well, yeah. I, I think it's, e I think it's where if you ask someone like, you know, if you ask me, Connor, you can make $10 guaranteed mm -hmm. or Connor, you can make a hundred dollars by, you know, pushing yourself and being a little crazy. And it might, yeah. it might, might go horribly wrong. Of course, every time I'm going to be like hundred bucks, let's do it. Yeah, of but, course. But, but the Japanese companies don't say it that way. Yeah, they but Nintendo, yeah, Jap yeah, Japanese companies like, yeah, there's one person in the company that wants to get creative, but he has to ask 60 other people for yes. Yeah, you know? And that <laughs> exactly. might take a while. And yeah? by the time they always say, yeah, a new trend's come out. I yeah. get, you know what I mean? I, I get it because almost, you know, if you're the you're the head of these companies, you don't want to get, make a hundred odd people lose their job. Yeah. Right? So you All go right. the safe route. But sometimes the safe route can just lead to being stagnant. Yeah, but also yeah, it's like, how problems. detrimental could it be if like one thing doesn't work out, right? Like again, yeah. Nintendo is the most cash rich company well, in Japan, right? It's like, yeah. how yeah. much do they have to lose? It sucks because you just, Everyone like wants Nintendo to just do get like, this shit together. Yeah, because everyone fucking loves. Everyone wants to like fucking see Nintendo. Every, everyone's yeah. cheering for Nintendo just to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Every, you know what I mean. It's literally the opposite of like EA, where everyone yeah. just wants EA to keep fucking up and, and keep. <laughs> fucking up to the point where laws have to be made. Yeah. But with Nintendo, everyone just wants to see, it's it, it's like in the, sh you know, you have those typical shows where, you know, the brother is addicted to drugs and the whole family is super nice. And is like, come on, just please stop. Just come on, get get back on your feet, yeah. man. Come on, it's, that's just with Nintendo. Yeah. It's like, how many chances do we have to give you? How many rehabs do we need to put you through to see you get back on track? Especially God after damn. all the fucking W's that they were taking in these last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they, were they were just it. like killing every E3. Everyone was like, yep, Nintendo, King, yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck everybody else, and yeah. now they just like we haven't had an L like, in a while. Like, let's, let's 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 give out a like, couple of L's. Like people fucking lost their shit when they brought out literal cardboard. Like, <laughs> like this is a company that can release cardboard <laughs> and we'll eat it up. Like th this is how much the we Nintendo want them Labo, to get double. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, like okay. At the end of the day, they do like the coolest fucking shit. Like they no, do. Yeah. No they, other Nintendo are just doing their own thing, man. Yeah, like I played Ring Fit, and I was like, who, what kind of crackhead came up with this idea <laughs> to like just fucking exercise with a Ring and like it, and it works and yeah, it's yeah. good. And like it's who fun. came up yeah. with this shit? This is insane. You would never <laughs> yeah. see this from any other company. It's, it seems like creatively they will take any fucking it's risk nuts. possible. Yeah. Yeah. But like on a business sense, they're yeah. like, no, no, yeah, we yeah, we do yeah. not do business here. Yeah. We only we only we only make things. Yeah. Business is not allowed. This episode is sponsored by Express VPN. When you use the bathroom, you can always close the door behind you, right? No, no, no never. You I never. Actually, I actually no. never do. Oh my god. Poop proud with the door open. <laughs> well. Fuck, that kind of fucks up the next line of this. <laughs> but I'm gonna say it anyway. You don't want a random passerby looking in on you unless you're these boys. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom without closing your door. That's a nightmare. Did you know that your internet service provider like Comcast or Verizon knows every single website you visit? I didn't, Connor, but thank you for letting us know. And what's worse, I'm told, is that they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. I don't believe it. But don't no. worry, ExpressVPN can put a stop to that. Okay. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi. And the best part is using ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me, believing your online activity should be your business, like when you take a shit, <laughs> secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash trash taste today. That's expressvpn.com slash trash taste. Yep. Or you can get extra three, three months. That's uh -huh. expressvpn.com slash trash taste. Links down in the description below. I think I think the creative, they, they obviously trust their creative people at Nintendo and they obviously yeah. let them do the crazy ideas. Like they released the Mario Kart like AR uh, did you see that? No. Yeah, you yeah, basically yeah, like yeah. get your own RC cars with cameras in them that can- Oh no, I saw that, I saw that. Which is again, another crazy it's fucking cool. Fucking, okay, yeah. It's so cool. 99% of people can't do this because I don't have the living room space. I, yeah. actually, I, yeah, actually, yeah. I actually do, but I mean, most people- You can't be bold. <laughs> I, yeah, I also, the thought of having to put a track down and then clean yeah. it up. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, I, mean, I mean, you know, just the whole concept of a Mario maker, right? No, that's Which fucking awesome. Like, clearly they're embracing like the, their fans' creative side. Yeah, yeah. I love watching Mario Maker videos on yeah, YouTube. They were so cool. fun.
but no, on the but but at the same time they're like. Mario Party Online? No, I never heard of that. <laughs> oh, oh no, that never. is the biggest missed opportunity <laughs> they've ever you done. Just said, you just said three magical words yeah. that I didn't think I needed to hear. And then I was just like, why, why, why have I never thought of this it's before? Like, it's like that meme of like, whisper the three sexiest words into my ear. <laughs> Mario Party Online. I can't believe they, re they released Super Mario Party on like two, in 2018 was yeah. it? And it didn't have online play and it had like four maps and they were shit. Sorry, I yeah. I was so disappointed because yeah. I fucking love Mario Party. I mean, Mario Party's the, still good LAN, but yeah. you know, yeah, but online the, would be fucking amazing. I, I don't know if you but guys do, play do, Mario Party. Okay, but. do you feel that some part of the Mario Party experience is being next to each other and just- oh, oh, dude, I, get that. I get that. But I would yeah. like the option, especially to like play online for yeah. streaming, yeah. right? If yeah. I need to, you got But no also option. like, you know, it's the same thing with like Smash, right? Like, yeah, playing Smash LAN, like next to your friends and shitting on them IRL is fun as fuck. Yeah. But they we very quickly found out that online is also just as fun. Especially yeah, yeah, on like exactly. a Discord call, like that shit's <laughs> fun as fuck. It's just but. sad. I mean, I, I feel like they just hate happiness sometimes. <laughs> it's like, and I thought when when Super Mario Party released, it's going way too much detail. It had like four maps and they were all mid. And I was like, okay, uh. well they'll release new ones, right? They'll update it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll have DLC, right? Like, I'm a fucking liar. Yeah, so that never happened. So yeah. I guess, we're, fuck, dude, I'm still sad about that. Yeah, I know. Oh, that game could have been something good. I'm yeah. always just hoping next Mario Party is, is the one that's yeah. going to be online. Because the thing, is, the thing is, the problem with it is like everyone else is playing chess and they're just playing fucking Hungry Hippos or something <laughs> like that. And so, sometimes, sometimes it's fucking fun as fuck, but other times you're just like, can you just go back to like a little bit of chess, you know, yeah, like yeah. like play by the rules just a little bit, you know? I don't get it because, you know, we live in Japan and they, they develop the games. I do not know of any Japanese people who go around to each other's houses. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't, you never hear of people, Japanese people meeting in their other people's houses. It's always at an izakaya or another place. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's just because you don't have that many Japanese friends. Well, the ones friends, I do but... have never do that. Oh, I do that with my Japanese friend. Do you actually? Yeah. I stand corrected. I mean, not I obviously not this year. Yeah, but, but nowhere near as often as like going out to like eat in an izakaya. Oh yeah, know. of course. But like, like th there's I, been a lot of cases where I would go out to eat and then we would go back to someone's place. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like in, in the West, right? We are like 90% of the time, it's like meet up at each other's house, get, you know, a few Yeah, <laughs> Because it's fucking wait, expensive wait. to eat no, out exactly. in the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whereas but here it's like just it's like cheap. The, yeah, it's like the opposite where it's like, I feel like for a country that should value what seems to be like online play more, yeah. For some reason, they don't include it. No, because they don't need more like reasons to stay at home. That's that's already a big enough problem. Is yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you say you you are you, okay? you no, 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 Nintendo is no. colluding with the government <laughs> to get all the Japanese people. Nintendo is like we're saving this generation from more hikikomori than if, we all What if birth? Mario Party is Japanese uh, Twister? <laughs> they're, like, they're like this is how we get them to fuck. <laughs> Invite them. <laughs> Why is Melian's face like look like I said something super racist there? Is Mario just, Party and chill. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have Netflix. They don't. No, they'd rather create like the next fucking Tron VR sex <laughs> machine toy than they would Mario Party Online. Let's be honest, guys. What was the thing we were talking about before again? It was the it was the Tenga that the, the Tenga operates X. with VR yeah. on. Does yeah, it? yeah. Have you seen that? No. It's like so for, to explain. I can't believe I'm explaining Tenga. Tenga. So Tenga is just like an owner hole or like flashlight. A, a flashlight. A flashlight. Basically, you but stick it, your penis in it. But it's but it's brown. Branded, so it doesn't look like a fleshlight. No, it's like really way too overly stylish. For it's, a a cl it's a classic. Uh, it's a classy. It's like a deodorant bottle. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a classy pocket pussy. That's what it is. <laughs> what are you gonna call it that? First, first so class gross. pocket pussy. I hate that word, pocket pussy. Yeah. I feel so Stop wrong. That's why they called it a tenga, right? Yeah, just call it a tenga. Just yeah, call it a tenga. But basically, tenga came out with this thing where it would. It's machine operated with like AI in it. And it works in tandem with VR porn. So you'd be watching VR. So you'd put this thing on your willy mm -hmm. and you, you don't have to touch it at all. You yeah. start the VR porn and the thing will move in time with what you're seeing on the VR porn. That's fine. Jesus Christ, I don't want that. man. That's and I'm just scary. like- I don't want that. I don't want that. Go to a brothel, bro. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing I think. I'm like, just at that point, just go get laid by a real person, please. That's that's like- You're probably paying more for I mean, that I, tech I than do, one session out I, of brothel. I do feel like there is, you know, going to a brothel is a bit different, I think. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta be the kind of person who's like, all right, I'm gonna go to a brothel. I get it, you know, you're probably, if you want sex that badly, but you're too shameful to go to a brothel, yeah. I get it. You're gonna pay like, well, I don't know, like 20 grand. Then it's in your house, right? Right. You should yeah. never have visitors over. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. They'll be like, what is that? What is that like medieval device you have in the corner? Oh, that's, that's my sex. No, 
I did. I saw like a video of it. It straight up looks like a torture device. If you don't oh, know, if you don't know what it I'm is, good. I'm good. I saw that on the news. They had a thing here where the government was commissioning like AI companies to like match people together because the bir- the birth rate is declining so low. But then I also feel uh, like- That's going into like dystopian worlds Yeah, now. but then I, I that's can't- George Orwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have a world that exists where we're AI matching each other, but then also having s- sex machines that cater for your every need. Yeah. Right. I, why, would I, why would I sign up to the AI matchmaking service? Like 50 service? Shades of Grey in like 2050 is yeah. just like this guy just brings out his VR sex machine. <laughs> why, why would I- <laughs> CD on a trolley. Why would, why would I sign up for an AI matchmaker? Which no. tango would you like? He's, he's not romancing a real girl. He's just romancing an anime girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I need to sign up for AI matchmaking when I have the like Comtron 7000 in my office? What, you know what like, I mean? What even would the AI determine? Like, how do you even determine that shit? Mm, I don't know. You'll probably just see- Your uh, star signs seem to be matched very well. Capricorns no, and Sagittarius tend to fuck very roughly. Knowing, like, knowing the J- Japanese, it'll probably be something like- Blood oh, type. <laughs> it'll be, yeah, it'll be, it'll be blood type <laughs> earning and male to female. And it'll be, right, yeah. that's good. You're compatible with half the population. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing has changed. I don't get Japan's obsession with blood types, man. That's weird. Oh, yeah, what is- I, Do you know your blood type? I don't know. I, I do don't not know my blood, blood type. type. I know. I, oh, I think only... mine, oh, I think. Is that good? It's, <laughs> it, well, I mean, I know there's three different types, right? There's OAB and AB. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, is yeah, yeah. AB is the rare one, right? AB is the rare one. I mean, I, I should know because I have like a blood disease. So I, I used to have a medical bracelet. <laughs> yeah, you probably yeah, should you know. Probably should know, know, shouldn't you? I used to have a medical bracelet uh, that would be like, you know, if I if I am bleeding, please give yeah. me this thing specifically. And do, then, do you uh, know what your parents are? Uh, no, but then I, I lost the I lost the medical bracelet, so I don't know where it is. So uh, <laughs> the one thing you probably shouldn't lose. <laughs> so I yeah. haven't, haven't got a replacement. It's been like a few years now. So just Wait, are kinda, you meant to like wear that always? Not meant to. It's just like a suggestion from the doctor. <laughs> what, what blows my mind? What blows my mind though is that in Japan, at least like in Japanese schools, like mm-hmm. you can get bullied for your blood type. That's epic. damn man. That's yeah. that's next level bullying. It's like it's like oh, you're an A type. That's right? just it's racism like, with extra steps, man. Yeah. That's, that does sound like a, an excuse. It's like I bet he's a filthy <laughs> yeah. O type. Yeah, you can't <laughs> hang out with us O types because you're yeah. an A type, right? And like because uh, <laughs> why, why why does everyone know each other's blood type? Yeah, I think I think yeah. it's because like when you do like uh, health checks check up. Oh here. yeah, we did that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't oh, yeah, done I haven't done that. mine yet, but oh, it should God, be written yeah. on your thing. That was that was so strange. So really? so to explain, <laughs> since we're signed with Geeks Plus, we are technically under their health insurance, and their company policy is that we have to get a health checkup once a year, which everyone in Japan has to do. Is which everyone right? in Japan has to do. twice a year. Okay, twice. We've, we've been here for one year already, Malin, but we've already had one checkup. How does that work? <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that was good. Okay, it? so we're supposed to go twice, Very but we've only just been once. Um, and it was weird because yeah, it, was I, it was weird seeing how efficient a health system can be. Um, yeah. How, how be- long did it take? Because I haven't, I haven't so gone yet. It took about, about 20 minutes. Oh, oh, it was get- like 30, it was like 30. Okay, well, thir- so still that's- So in, in 30 minutes, you, I, you do an X-ray, uh, your blood pressure, you get weighed, uh, you get blood taken. Uh, you do a hearing and uh, sight test. Yeah. You talk to a doctor who will talk to you. And then you do a cardiogram. And a cardiogram. A, yeah. Wow, all in, 30 in like minutes. 30 minutes. All in 30 Fucking minutes. Hell. It was like, it was like speed running. We, we, <laughs> we were speed running health checks and they, they even had like fucking splits as well. <laughs> <laughs> because it was just yeah, like, right, right, split on that right, x-ray. <laughs> x-ray split done, all right. <laughs> Blood taking split, let's go. And it, it, it literally felt like that. Cause it was like, cause I was about like, uh, because I had some problems with my form. So I had to fill out my form again. Mm. So I was only about like five to 10 minutes behind Connor. Yeah. And by the time I had just like, just started my, like I'm yeah, gonna call really it, done. I'm gonna call it a conveyor belt. Cause that's what it felt yeah. like. It felt like I was in chicken run being processed. <laughs> Um, so I was, I, I had just started the process and Connor was almost done. And wow. it was the most efficient. Yeah. Because I saw the list of all the things that get checked up and yeah. I was like, oh, this is gonna be like an all day. Yeah, thing. you also yeah. have to pee the night before and bring it with you, which I just always feel weird. Oh yeah, my, I do have to do Carrying that. A, a vial of a my vial piss. A vial of piss. Who yeah. knows what, what might arise. <laughs> so you go into this room and it's like this really busy place in like Shinjuku, which I imagine a lot of people will go to if they ever mm, work yeah. in Japan. And then there's uh, like, you go to this uh, reception area, there's like 12 desks, they're like, all right, come here. You hand the form, they're like, right, go upstairs. You go upstairs, yeah. everyone's in like medical gowns yeah. in yeah. like a really fancy office looking thing. All right. It's really odd. And yeah. it's basically just a small room, not even that big with like couches in the middle. And then you can see the like sections, like it's a food court of like, what's <laughs> gonna do what. You can see everyone getting their oh, blood wow. taken. You can yeah. see everyone, like, you see everyone doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you, they're like, all right, go in this room get changed. So you put the medical gown on, you come back in and then they're like, right, you have a number. 
So you're literally like a, a chicken in a farm. It's like actually chicken. You right? literally, it is, it you is. literally are like a piece of meat being like passed around the different things. Right. You, know? yeah. you gotta get sanitized. You know? <laughs> and so you just, they basically just come in, they're like number 124. And then you go in and then you just have to like, hopefully understand what they're saying in Japanese. Wow. Yeah. And then they tell you. And yeah, it was just fast. It was like, boom, boom, boom. Wow. But I was like, fuck dude, I hate blood tests. I hate getting my blood taken. Yeah. God, I haven't done that in a while. And then I was like, I was just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do my next week. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Is it? No, it's not. It's it's, <laughs> it's as fun as a health check can be because right. I it it was something that was so alien for me, yeah, especially really coming fast. from the UK. Which you know, big up the NH NHS for giving giving everyone everyone free healthcare. But the price you pay for that is that you have to wait for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, when I say everything, even just going to the fucking GP, it's sometimes, yeah. sometimes you're like, you got a fever or something. Mm. I've phoned up my GP and they're like, oh, we can't- Six days. Yeah, we can't, we can't book you in until next week. And I'm, I'm just like, great. I guess I'll just try I, to sleep I, off this I guess I'll be sick then. for the next <laughs> more entire week then. And by the time you yeah. can see the GP, you've already, most of the time, you've, you've already recovered. Yeah. yeah. I think I never visited the doctor in London, but I booked three times to see it when I was like dying. And every yeah. time before the appointment, I got better and I had to cancel it because it was like i'm already better right it's like, it literally takes a week at least in london it's even it's worse but i remember like i would like i think i thought i broke my arm one time when i was a kid mm. and i was i was in the emergency room and i'm like fuck dude i'm gonna have to get an x-ray and they're like yep yeah, so uh come back in a week and a half and we'll give you an x-ray and i'm like what <laughs> like what do i just do in a week what do, like what about my arm <laughs> yeah. like yeah just come back in a week and a half and i'm like but what, what do i do till then <laughs> they're like oh just don't do anything to it i'm like what yeah. do you mean don't do anything to it I'm like, what do i should do for a week and a half not move my arm what do you so stupid, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And it was so weird going to the Japanese health checkup mm. and they like, they, they started off with the x-ray. Cause right, I, right. like when I think x-ray, I'm just like, in, in my head, I'm just like, I'm not getting an x-ray unless it's something serious. So this mm -hmm. is obviously like the big checkup. This is the x-ray, but no, they fucking lubed us up, lubed us up with a fucking x-ray, man. Like we, oh, yeah. we went in there wow. and then we just like, they, they go, please go to the x-ray machine. And it's just like a, a, a rectangle on mm. a wall and you just put your chest against it. Yeah. It's really odd. Oh, uh, cause when I imagine x-ray, I, I imagine like the line yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, like, yeah, I've yeah, always, yeah, had, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, always had that. It was bizarre. It was, I, I've never I've never had an x-ray done before. So. Yeah, yeah. What, what was weird actually was the cardiogram, which uh, where, where you oh, like- yeah, I've never had that before. Yeah, I've never had that before. Where what you like that? lie down on the bed mm. and you kind of feel like a mental patient about to get lobotomized. Yeah. Cause, Cause they, they put these- they, Suckers on you. They put these suckers on you and then they put these appendages on your on your heart and your arms and legs. Yeah. And yeah, it just kind of feels like you're to get the bottom I was waiting for like the electric shock to come. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, go hit me, go. But no, nothing happened. Then they, did they like, they had to lube me up as well. They yeah, 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 yeah. They had to put like lube on you. Cause like, I think I had chest hair. Right. So it, do it doesn't go, what maybe? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? It's it's a natural medical Mal procedure. Maylene is a, uh, Maylene is a- uh, I'm uh, not talking about my in-depth colonoscopy, maybe. Ma Ma Maylene's off screen, just like blushing. Which by the way, which by the way- like the smallest detail. I was, I was told if you're over 35, every year you have to have a colonoscopy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Every year you have to have a colonoscopy. Uh, it's, it's because it's because uh, Japan in Japan hemorrhoids is a really common problem. <laughs> How? I, I'm, How? I'm legit. I'm legit serious. J like I think it's I think I saw something crazy like one in four men in Japan have hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah, Connor was telling me afterwards that he he doesn't want a colonoscopy because he's afraid that it'll it'll awaken something. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? All I'm saying is like, what if I dig it, man? What, <laughs> what you gonna like crack a fat on the fucking? <laughs> <laughs> hey Surgeon man, table. Hey man, like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Because like, ah! <laughs> I was, I was momentarily confused. I said, "Call me." I'm like, wait, wait. I'm like, which end is that? I'm like, I'm which like, end is that? I'm like, because I thought about it. Would you rather something go up your ass or down your throat? Uh, yeah, because he asked. I, think, he, yeah, I thought, he, thought, thought he, yeah. he thought it was going down your throat, so they check your throat or down yeah. like your no, that's, stomach. What's, or what's that called? That's a different that's thing, something right? Something else. And I was yeah. like, I was yeah. like totally down. I'm like, all right, fine. Put it on my ass, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Down my throat, whatever, up my ass. No, 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 so it's, it's just, the opposite way. Oh, the opposite yeah, way. Yeah, the opposite way. way. I'd rather something up my ass than yeah. down my throat. Maylene Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Maylene, what would you <laughs> uh, uh, Then also, when we were doing this health checkup as well, they would like, we had like the, the blood pressure thing with yeah, the yeah. arm and like the thing in it, which also always feels the weird. The thing that squeezes your arm. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And then the doctor was like, yeah, you did, you did good on that. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I did yeah, what good. is doing bad? I'm like, like ah! I'm like, explain what did good means. Like, your numbers are good. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, explain the fucking numbers to me. What is this supposed to mean? I got, there was like- I a, put all my attention into my arm to change my blood pressure. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was doing some like Hunter Hunter Nen shit on that thing. I'm like, <laughs> heart rate zero. 
You did like avatar blood bending <laughs> shit. It's just like, yeah, I, I'm yeah. just like, I will now make my heart rate zero so my enemies cannot find me. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then we got our blood taken. And I remember we were, to- before we got our blood taken, we were talking about, you know, you know we, yeah. ja- <laughs> we were talking about how the Japanese health system, ha- we've, had, we've all had pretty good experiences with the Japanese health system because right, we, right. we all have like, I don't know why, we all have like that inherent fear that, you know, everyone's had a shitty, shitty experience when they have taken the blood and they've just missed the vein. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that happened to me. <laughs> that <laughs> really? Yeah. That like it was foreshadowing. That happened right. to me because I I knew it as soon as he stuck the needle in. Because you know, you you can feel it when when like it goes straight to your vein. You, you it feels exactly like the doctor describes. It's just like a prick, right? Yeah. And it just comes out. So he sticks this needle in, and I could feel immediately that something was wrong. Cause it was like, that's not a vein, that's muscle. And you start you feeling did. pain. And I felt, uh, sorry for anyone who has like a needle phobia. Cause I'm gonna, I'm not uh, like, so I can feel him like kind of twitching the needle around oh. in my arm. And I'm just like, I'm just like, how do I tell him it's not there? How do I tell him it's not there? <laughs> and he does it for like a full like minute before he realizes, oh, there's no blood coming out. And I look, and I look <laughs> over. He's just pulling up fat. Like yeah. in the needle. <laughs> I look over and there's like, you know, you know, like the vial of blood. Yeah. There's like the vial, the vial was filled up that much for like the minute he was poking my it's arm and I'm just like, like scar tissue yeah, yeah. I was like god fucking damn it man I knew it so oh, I, I, I felt so embarrassed I was like fuck I want to be cool and not like like shit myself here yeah. Yeah. but then I was like oh god and I was like oh no the nurse is cute oh no I can't I'm gonna no, I'm I gonna think with needles myself. I feel needles are the only time where you can bring out your inner pussy and just yeah. be like I don't I don't know I, I, like, I, I, I can't look at the needle going in I like oh yeah. I, I have to look at the needle going what? in what you do yeah I, I like it's on the contrary for me if I if he's like, all right, we're gonna go in. And if I don't see it and I feel a prick, that scares me. Joey's, Joey's just like, he's like, it's going in. Yeah, no, legit. I have to go like, I have to go hard mode. I have to be like, do it, do it now. Wait, so what Come about, on. wait, what about staring at you being like pierced helps you? Because I know when the pain is coming. What? You know no, what I mean? Like, that's worse. No, no, no. Because, because what, then, you're ex- then you're expecting the pain. No, right? no, what's worse for me is unexpected pain. Where I'm just like, I'm just chilling. No, and it's, just like, it's like, ow! You, you barely feel it if you don't look though. No, no, yeah. no. I feel it more if I don't look. What? That's, yeah. Because that's that's like, have you ever, have you ever like cut yourself or have like an injury? You don't feel it all day. Yeah. And then suddenly you look at it and you're like, wow, there's a cut. And then suddenly you start yeah. feeling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly, me, that's exactly, me and needles. Same, same. Really? And because pain, every time yeah. I get cut, it's just like immediate I can't, pain. Like right. I can't imagine seeing blood literally gush out of my veins and thinking, yeah, that, that's uh, that looks like not a gonna lie. Experience. Like during like during the summer, for instance, like because like during the summer your blood pressure is a lot higher. Yeah. So when the blood comes out, it kind of just like gushes out, and I'm just like, oh, that looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> I like looking at that. It's kind of cool. I, I, I missed. Oh I remember. I was I was like, like, whoa, that's coming out of my body. <laughs> Fuck. I, I remember as a kid, they would just give me this like contraption that was just like filled with like paint oil, and it would just like all of it would like you would flip it over and it'd start playing like crazy. And yeah. You should do that to distract. <laughs> to distract yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because I was like, wow, look at that thing go. No, I just, oh, just look at the vial. I'm like, whoa, that's cool. That's weird. I can't do that. Really? I was just like, I put my hand on the table. I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> you smacked it off. I was like, I was like, Ka- I was like Kawhi, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Why would you have to like smack it off? I'm like, come on, get ready, boy. Belt in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we, so I'm like, using mine. We're using mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, was, what was weird for me because because normally when I get my blood taken, I'm used to it being like uh, like a private place. Yeah, you know what I mean? You like know what I mean? Front of everyone. Yeah, and so, and so and so we had our blood taken like a conveyor belt, and I was just like eyeing up the next guy, the, the guy next to me getting yeah, there his was blood three, taken. Three of us right yeah, next to yeah, each yeah. other getting our blood taken. It was very yeah. odd. And neither of us could look at the look at the blood getting taken, and we just fucking like met eyes and just like. <laughs> right, well, it's, 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 and then it's we like, kissed. Yeah, it's like meeting guys in a urinal. But, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like, so this is awkward. How's your day going? Oh, that's I, that's a that's you look like an O type there. I feel like, fuck you. Like, what <laughs> are you meant to say? To, right? Just trying to start, strike up any conversation. <laughs> I guess it is odd that we kind of made it into a private thing in the West, right? Like, does it yeah. really need to be private? Getting your blood taken? Like, if I mean, it doesn't. But I would. I, I feel more. I think, com- I, think, I think it's that people would prefer it, right? I'd, like, like, I'd I'd prefer it, but. If, I was, if if that means that, you know, I get medical tests way fucking quicker in the UK, yeah. by all means, do my colonoscopy in front of the other patients. I, <laughs> I do not mind, like, let's get this done. It's like, like oh, you like, cracked the fat too? Same. <laughs> <laughs> High five. I, if that means I can get it done 20% faster and I can get on with my day, yeah, I'm exactly. gladly, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get my blood. If I faint in front of a group of 20 people, who cares? That's, that's why in my head, I was like, oh, this is gonna be an all day thing. Yeah, I because a health checkup an anywhere thing. else is I, I definitely an all day thing, all day right? Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the worst part was that you couldn't eat uh, or drink anything the night before. 
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. After like 8 p.m., you have to stop eating and drinking. And yeah. normally that wouldn't be a problem. But when you tell me I can't eat and drink, I'm like, well, fuck, now I want to. <laughs> well, now I want to just Wait, eat. you can't even drink water? Oh, you can drink no, water. No, you can. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> you can drink yeah, I was going to say. You can drink, but water's the only thing you can drink. Yeah, you can't right, have right, any right. alcohol. I was, like, I was like, British people like shaking tea, tea. Ah! <laughs> yeah, uh, basically no substance like in your bloodstream. Mm. The night Why is there substance? Yeah. What are you, what are you taking? God, God's like- you gotta, you gotta put the belt and spoon away. God, 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 God damn it. God damn it, they're gonna see my heroin yeah, veins and everything, it. man. Like, make sure to hit the heroin vein. It's like, don't, don't worry, I got this. I've, I've done this before. Oh, well, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> just got this. this is a joke. No How'd you take heroin again? You take a pint of heroin? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. how you take it's it, It's a right? pint, it's a pint, definitely. <laughs> Can't believe the trash taste boys make like a light of drug addicts. How do they? Yeah, well. In case you don't get sarcasm, none of us have done heroin. Okay, let's just play. Let's want to make that clear. <laughs> Yet, unless that's that's, that's the, the dark arc of the trash tape. <laughs> no, okay, okay. We should stop trash joking. Tape. We should stop joking about me. Oh my god! I heard you guys had an exciting taxi journey. Yeah, so I. I convinced Joey <laughs> to get a taxi because Joey wanted to get the train home because it's about like half the price. But you know, it was like midnight. I it, was, was it was the day where Connor and I were streaming at the Trash Taste office, if you guys saw on our Twitch. Yeah. But it was like 11 PM when we finished. Yeah, and I was like, fuck getting the train yeah. home. Come on, Joey, let's get a taxi home. Let's be comfortable. Let's, you know, it's late. You know, I, we I just don't know what out. you see. I, I don't know why you like have this massive thing about like the comfort in taxi. It's not that much it's more comfortable. comfortable. It's Dude, not it's that much so comfortable. much more comfortable. Okay. Okay. You say it as what? if it's like business class versus economy. Class. Honestly, that's the way I see it. Like, no, no. Because oh. also right now with the Rona going on, I don't. Re if I can avoid getting a train, I'll avoid getting a train. I, I understand that, yeah. but for, for me, like, I would most like ninety percent of the time, I would rather get like have have a longer journey that I can actually do stuff on because I can't do anything on a taxi. I look at well, my- I can do more on a taxi. I look at my phone and I immediately you just get cast. You can't do anything on a train in Japan. Yeah, I mean, you can watch YouTube videos. Yeah, you, you can, can do, do that, that in Twitter. a taxi. No, you, no, no, I no, can't no. because I get car sick. Because That's I don't know why. Well, I'm sorry that your natural selection didn't favor you, Jerry. Oh, wow. That's not my problem. Well, I'm not the only one. God gets car sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both I think, of you. I think, <laughs> most, I think most people get car sick yeah. when they look do at you, stuff. What, I, how do you get, I'm focusing on the the YouTube video with the thing. It's because so it's because getting... you can't see outside, so the inertia just fucks you up. Yeah, because what? that's I've, how you get car sick. I, I'm not sure about the exact signs of car sickness, but I've like cars are the only vehicle I get motion sickness in. Yeah, anything else I can like read. I can boat. Yeah. Boats. I... Well, that's not car sick, is it? It's yeah, seasick. that's she said vehicle. <laughs> I don't think I get seasick. Really? I, yeah, I, yeah. I get seasick sometimes. I get, I get slightly seasick. I was gonna say, because normally people who are car sick get seasick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's- I don't get car sick that easily though. Unless you're watching something. Unless, but if I'm looking down at my phone or like, I can't yeah, read no, no, in no, a like, car. Like, like I, I I don't get car sick if I'm just sitting God, there yeah. listening to music. Must be hell then. Yeah, it's fucking like, boring like, for yeah. me. When you have to travel like four hours in a car, what do you God, do? God, I fucking I just turn on my some life. music and go to bed. Oh yeah, that's God. why I, I think that's why I've conditioned myself to be able to sleep so easily in cars. Yeah. Because I literally can't do anything in cars, but, it's but weird. sleep and listen to music. I could do the exact same thing on a bus and not get sick. On a bus? Yeah, I could be on a bus and watch YouTube Actually, or whatever or read. Fucking look at the needles and do this shit. What but, what <laughs> but I can't, but I, but I, but if I do that in a car, I think it's five the, minutes in. I, I think it's the smaller the vehicle, the more likely I'm to get sick. I, I don't so. know what the science is behind that, yeah. but if it's like a, like this, if it's like a small taxi, especially if it's a small taxi and we're like squeezed in, mm. then and if you're I, in the back seat, right? And if you're in the back seat, yeah, I yeah. just get immediately. I don't want to be in the sick. front of the taxi. I don't want to, I don't want to make eye contact with the taxi driver. You don't have to. What, you think you're just gonna fucking do this the entire ride? Well, sometimes, you know, you might find yourself wandering and you look at him and it's this awkward moment of like, hi, how you doing? No, I never Good driving, good driving. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like? I'm uh, awkward, I don't wanna make eye contact with I, him. I, I, have the, I have the same problem in the back seat where I accidentally sometimes look at the- like, No, oh, that's yeah, the I, 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 I sometimes that's look at the, the rear view mirror yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I make eyes with them and then just like, hi there. Hi. <laughs> you just I'm have to do like the silent seat. like, Oh, the, the, worst, because, the worst is when they're a fucking awful driver as well. You gotta pretend like they're doing a good job and they're just fucking Yeah, insane. and that's why I prefer to be in the front because I'm less likely to get sick in the front from shit driving yeah. than in the back. Because you're fucking just, thrown around in the back. Anyway, the story, so- <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about the fucking story. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, so, we, we, so, we can go back into taxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, anyway, yeah. so Connor was like, look, it's it's 20 minutes home on a, on a comfy it's taxi. It's quicker, it's quicker, it's quicker by only like five, 10 minutes. We get minutes. closer to our house because we don't have to go to the station and yeah. walk, right? Not that much. Yeah, but, so know. I was like, all right, fucking, I'll humor your taxi ride. Good. So then we get in the taxi, 
taxi's driving fine and then we go onto this like kind of bridge thing mm -hmm. and uh and then just some random police officer just walks out onto the street and kind of fl flags us down right and tells us to go into one of the roads yeah. And immediately the taxi driver was like, does the Japanese equivalent of, oh, fuck. <laughs> he's like, it's like he's, this 90 year old yeah, dude just being old. like, oh, yeah, yeah. shit. And he pulls in and Connor and I are like, what the fuck's going on? And I asked the taxi driver, I'm like, uh, something wrong? And he's like, I was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? You got stopped for speeding. And he's like, yeah, I was doing 80 down to 60. <laughs> and this fucking old dude just like walks out of the taxi fucking like, you know, Ozzy Osbourne style, yeah. just like kind of <laughs> stumbles out. Four, like, four policemen surround this yeah. like old, poor old man. Yeah, and, and like in the middle of the night as he's filling out this paperwork yeah. and Connor and I just kind of sitting there being like, oh, we could have been home by now if we weren't on the train, huh? <laughs> the one time I humored this man to get on a taxi. Listen, we get that home. is the first time I've ever had a taxi driver been pulled over by the police, you know? Cause I was like, I was like, I was just hoping that they wouldn't be like, all right, let's have a look what these, these boys in the back look pretty foreign. Let's yeah, see what's yeah, going yeah. on with these boys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was, I was like, fuck, come on. Yeah, no, I, I, I was afraid that might happen as well. Yeah. So immediately, like before the police officer even started talking to <laughs> us, I just immediately bust out the Japanese yeah. being like, what's going on officer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the police officers asked us, they were like, is it okay if we stop you for now? Like the driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, what, 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 what if we said no? Yeah, I'm like, what, what are you supposed to say to that? Like, we're no, in the no, middle fuck of fucking you. nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> There's no taxis anywhere. What do you expect us to do? Like walk they, they pulled us over, over some bridge. So there wasn't like much there. So mm. it was just like some water. Like, right. And like a bunch of like a power plant nearby. So it was like nothing. It was really odd. So <laughs> four police officers, like fucking busted just, down this decrepit taxi Yeah, just driver. for this guy. And then there's two other police officers just standing there doing nothing. Cause that's what they do here. Yeah. Every police officer, every police story I've heard in Japan is is all about how many police officers you need versus how many was actually needed. They, they literally the send like six police officers to like, you know, someone falling over on a bike. Yeah. It's like, it's insane. They're so bored here. They have nothing to do. Yeah, or they need, you know, spotters, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, the I got you, bro. Nice policing you're doing there. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, because normally in the UK, it's always like two people. Like it's always a, a squad. Right? Yeah, exactly. Two people and, you got know, one and your partner, right? Yeah, yeah it's normally yeah. how it should be, right? Yeah. And you yeah. don't, because also this, I, I don't know if this is on purpose, but it's very intimidating when four or five policemen are crowding around you and you haven't done anything and they're, they're asking you questions. They all, they all look pissed off. And I'm like, well, come on. What's going on here then? <laughs> yeah, right. That's all, that's all this about. I felt so bad for the old dude because he he looked like he was about to get fucking beaten up by yeah. his four police officers. Because they literally was just crowding around him, yeah. just like looking down at the paperwork. And I, I was like, I've never been in this situation as well. This is the first time where I've been near police where they haven't asked for like my ID and like information and stuff. Yeah, it. Well, like yeah a, because I busted out the Japanese yeah, yeah, queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so annoying because you just go near them and they're like, "Hey, can we see ID and all this." And I'm like, "Why? I'm not involved in this. I'm yeah. literally just a customer. Leave me alone." What do you think I had a Gun pointing yeah, to the yeah, taxi. Yeah, yeah. like, like, do it. Do, yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You sick cunt. <laughs> like, like, no. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Stop like, playing Europe in the background. Yeah. Hey, come on, <laughs> gas, gas, yo, gas. Drift, yo, drift this corner. Drift this corner. <laughs> do it. Do it. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I've done it one time. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Mac Weldon. There are a lot of things that you'd probably like to leave behind in 2020. One of the most important being your old underwear. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're rolling into the new year with the same bunching, chafing, and uncomfortable underwear, then you've got to check out Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is an essential piece of my daily routine. Thanks to this card holder, boys, that holds all my cards very neatly. Thank you, Mac Weldon. I have a face mask because I'm scared of the outside, it's, as should you be. Wait, Gon, what is that that you're wearing? Is that it Mac is, Weldon? It is a nice little Mac Weldon fleece, because it is winter right now, Damn. and it is cold outside, and That's I just want to feel comfortable. You're looking fly. Thank you very much. Mac Weldon has all the men's essential covered. Socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, and active shorts. Mac Weldon promises comfort and consistent fit with versatility that look great and feel great from working out, going out, going to work, or even going on a date. Mac Weldon is for everyday life. Don't forget about the wide range of technology. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Chuck? Don't, don't forget about the wide range of technology of customized custom. fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. 18 hours, silver, air knit, dry knit, warm knit. So 
lot of nits. But did you also know, Gaunt, this Wild and Blue totally free loyalty program? Level one gets you free shipping for life. Once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year, Gaunt. Get that out of insane. here, Get and out of on here. On top of that, there is the guarantee that Mac Weldon gives you. Do you know what that is? The, the Mac Weldon what, what, guarantee? What is, what is the Mac Weldon well, guarantee? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Mac Weldon wants you to be comfortable, Gaunt. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them and they'll still refund you. No questions asked. Even if I've worn them before? Especially if you've worn Even them. Even if I- I'm here too. Especially if you've been a little dirty gamer boy and not going to the toilet. For 20% off your first order, visit macweldon.com slash trash taste and enter promo code trash taste. That's macweldon.com slash trash taste, promo code trash taste for 20% off Mac Weldon. Reinventing, Reinventing men's, men's basics. basic. Don't steal this line from me. Thank you Connor. to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this episode. Back to the show. But in general, uh, I, I do find taxis a little, uh, I don't know, awkward. I don't know. As somebody again who thinks about things a lot socially, I, I like to think of like the uh, perfect social <laughs> situations. What's, uh, what's uh, awkward about them? Yeah. Well, I don't know. So, okay. Well, I mean, actually, you talk so highly of taxis, right? In like, Japan, in Japan, it's good them? because I know they'll they'll I actually know some of them do actually try and talk to me. Yeah. I was about to yeah. say none of them ever talk to me, but some yeah. of them some of them will. I, I, I feel some of the older ones they bust out a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Some of some friendly. people who also like maybe yeah. learned English in college. Especially, or I've noticed taxi drivers in the countryside. To yeah. me, oh like, yeah, they love they to love talk talking. To you. Yeah. yeah, in the city, it's just like, all right, it's you're you're it's, a customer. I am a taxi driver. I will not communicate in any way, yeah, shape, or yeah. form. It's it's charming um, in in Japan. I think when the taxi drivers try and talk to you, oh, they, I agree. especially in English, when they try and talk to you, it's like, oh damn, you were, you were putting on the works. So please focus on driving, but you know, go ahead. <laughs> the <laughs> best the best taxi driver I ever had was in um it was in Okinawa. Mm. And uh, we were going from- well, what, what constitutes a good taxi driver? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it was a good Wait, taxi driver. Uh, do you like it when your taxi drivers talk to you? Sometimes, I gotta be in the right mood. I feel. Yeah, yeah, same here. Like sometimes I'm just so fuck, like, you know, if it's like fucking 3 a.m., right? Yeah. And I'm like either drunk or just tired or both. Yeah. And I'm stepping in. I don't want to have a fucking conversation with the taxi driver. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, Some, sometimes sometimes you get in a taxi driver and they ask how your day is going. And I'm just like, I, I, I'm, I'm just like, oh, you know what? can you not Cheery. tell by the way I look? Here we go, here we go. <laughs> I mean, it depends if I'm alone or with friends. Have you, have, you, have, you, have you ever had a taxi driver who butt into a conversation between you and friends? Oh no. yeah. That, I hate that. that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a social invitation, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the best, the best taxi ride I had was in Okinawa because we were we were gonna go, okay. we were going from our hotel to this like one uh, castle okay. in uh, in Naha, and it was like a 30 minute taxi ride. Okay. Right. Um, and the dude was like, you know, obviously an older gentleman, mm. yeah, and, but he clearly had been there his entire life, so. Yeah. And he knew immediately, he's like, oh, foreigners, you clearly don't know a whole lot about this place, huh? <laughs> and he started talking and he took us on this really fucking scenic route, oh, like throughout nice. all these like places. But he yeah. said, he's like, I took you on the scenic route, but I'll charge you for the regular route. Oh, nice so he was guy. nice enough. So he would like actually like kind of stop the car and kind of be like, this is this. And you know, Man, this is man's a, kind of cool a tour guide. No, <laughs> no, 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 he's a legit, Jackson, like he, he was like oh, a tour guide. I actually had something very similar happen to me when I went to Koshi Valley. Cause we wanted yeah. to go to this right, one. Taxi drivers just part-time like fucking tourists. Yeah, yeah, like, I think they're just happy because they're just happy. One, they're happy to have tourists there yeah, because yeah. I'm pretty sure business has not oh, been yeah, banging true, this true, year. True. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we, me and Sydney were on his taxi drive, uh, on his taxi ride to get to this winery. And he's like, let me give you tour of the other wineries in the area as well, just in case you want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you want to go to it. And he, yeah, he only charged us for the taxi ride to the one winery. But yeah, we, we got a tour of like yeah, every winery you down there. Show me these taxi drivers. Yeah. I'm never getting I mean, them. again, like I feel taxi drivers like that though really only exist in the countryside. Yeah, you don't really right. get that. Yeah. Dude, in Tokyo, they're fucking miserable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would be too, to be honest. <laughs> I also, there's, uh, what's the, oh, it's in Roppongi. There's a big cemetery. Um, I'll find it. For, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, forgot the name of it. Giant. I'll yeah. send you a picture of Mudan. But um, there's this whole area right next to this giant cemetery. Right, there's a yeah. big stretch of road, mm. yeah. and taxi drivers just sleep there. Like, really? They, there's <laughs> hundreds of taxis parked. Right. <laughs> And they all park and they all just sleep and like change clothes in this area. It's on a busy road in a really busy area. Right. Yeah. And so they all just sleep there. Wow. It's so bizarre. Yeah, you can do that here. You can just park your car on the on a busy road yeah. and yeah. just sleep. Yeah. Like people do that. It's so weird. Yeah. Like you can't do that in the UK. No, I, I feel most countries you can't do that. No, even in the countryside, that'd be weird. Someone would like come and stop you and be like, yo, are you okay? What's up? <laughs> have, you, have you, by the way, seen, I couldn't fucking believe this, but have you seen uh, those like, rare taxis that you can get in Tokyo. Rare no. taxis. So, I can't believe Japan has actually done this, but they've literally turned 
taxis into gotcha. Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> of like, course they have, of so course they have. I forgot the exact name of it, but I think it's called like Sakura taxis. Right. So you know how like in most taxis in Tokyo, and this is only a Tokyo thing, uh, but like, you know how on taxis, like they, they usually have like the signs on top of the car yeah. that like show, you know, whether the taxi's open or whatnot. Yeah. Apparently out of, I think like the 7,400 taxi cars in the greater Tokyo area, there yeah. are five taxis that have like a Sakura thing on top of it. Yeah. And supposedly that's like the SSR of taxis. <laughs> and it's like, and- and What'd what, you get? What, what, what no, because one get? of my, cause one of my friends actually got it the other day. Yeah. Um, And when you enter into the taxi, it's lot, lot nicer and like actually like a first class of taxis. Oh, and damn. inside there's like a little sheet of paper that says, congratulations, you found one of five Fuck, ultra that's... rare taxis. <laughs> Fuck, I hate that. I think that's so fucking cool. Yeah, I think that's so fucking cool. And it just, and I'm just like, I really want to kind of go around now trying to find this fucking mythical taxi, this SSR taxi. <laughs> Dude, my fucking, my, my fucking gacha pool. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's the gacha pool of taxis now. Gant's oh like my God. already. He's like, oh my God. It's like God. every time you use like Tokyo taxi app, <laughs> yeah. you're just like, like, come on, give me the, give me the SSR, give me the SSR. <laughs> what is this, like a 0 0.01 boy or something like that? <laughs> Fuck it, I'll give it a go, why yeah. not? All go, right, Connor, go, let's, go, let's get more taxis yeah, now. Yeah. just calling taxi after taxi <laughs> to his house and they're all just parked up. It's like, are you the rare taxi? No, I'll, don't worry, yeah. I don't need a taxi. Let me, it's like, oh, it's fuck, it's blue bag, blue bag. He's <laughs> just like, come on, give me the gold bag, give me the gold bag. <laughs> Well, I just think that's so fucking cool that like, that's just like one extra, I guess, like piece of enjoyment you can have as a tourist, right? Like yeah, yeah. knowing that now, when you come to Japan and you go on a taxi, like you can you can look forward to that being like, finna pull the SSRs <laughs> on taxis. It's the one reason as a tourist you should yeah. use a taxi because God damn, they're expensive in Japan, Oh, in, oh, in Tokyo, dude, they, dude, they're they fucking get, expensive. They get pissed off if you take a short journey as yeah. well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I, I've taken, sometimes I've had like too much shit to carry. So I've had to get like, it's like a short walk from the station to my house. But mm. I remember like a few times when I've gotten the taxi because I had like too much stuff to carry. They were like, oh, there? <laughs> okay. Oh, here? And then I this say house? like, yeah, yeah. And then I say like, thank you when I leave and they don't say it back. And I'm really? like, wow, okay. In Japan, that's like the biggest fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. didn't say thank you back, the audacity. That's like the equivalent of flipping the book. That yeah, is, yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't realize oh, that until someone pointed it out that it happened another time as well. They were like, wow, that was really rude. I'm like, was he? I thought he was just, <laughs> thought he was just driving. <laughs> well, he didn't say thank you back. What a, yeah, what, the, a what a fucking the, asshole. The, the yeah. first time it happened was a similar situation where it was like a very short journey. It was like a, yeah. a, an $8 journey, not yeah. even. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I got out and the other person with me was like, wow, that was so rude. And I'm like, what was rude? <laughs> you just drove us, you didn't say anything. He's like, yeah, I said, thank you. You didn't say it back. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. okay the sure. audacity of this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get back in that car and give him a slap, you know? <laughs> like, I <laughs> No, but like, that's the thing. It's like, it's just Tokyo taxis that are just so fucking expensive. Because yeah. like, if you think about it, catching a taxi in Tokyo is a luxury because yeah. trains are just so fucking convenient in Tokyo. Whereas the moment you're out of the greater Tokyo area, a lot of places without a taxi, you're yeah. fucked. Well, yeah, it, yeah, just, yeah. it depends. I think it depends where you're going because there's some. If you're on the outskirts of Tokyo, right? Sometimes going if you're going in like an uh, like a like I don't know quarter circle, let's say mm. they, they don't really have trains that go like like London, right? It's right. the exact same where trains go in and out mm. and they don't go around normally. Right, right. So if you want to go to the outskirts, not some most of the time to get like just you know a 15 minute taxi drive away, mm. it might require you to go in all the way to central and then go out. Yeah, yeah, that's It's like true. 50 minutes and yeah. it's like, well, mm -hmm. you know, how much is 45 minutes of my time worth or 30 minutes? You know? Right, but yeah. I think like the majority of people central just don't Tokyo, really no care excuse. about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're like, you know, going to- Where, Shinjuku, Whereas in Shibuya. Okinawa, there's literally one tram line that goes for <laughs> five stops. <laughs> And that's the only train line that they have on the entire island. So yeah, that's why the taxis around. are like half the price that you get in Tokyo. Yeah, if the, if the people rely on it, the, the local government will yeah, help. Like a 30, yeah, like the sure. 30 minute tax fee ride in Okinawa I was talking about was like 2000 yen. Oh shit, it seriously. Was, yeah, it's really, really cheap. Because in Tokyo, that would be about like 60, 70 Six, bucks. Yeah. I'm convinced, about right, that in Tokyo, they don't, they don't make people retire. They make them become taxi drivers. <laughs> That's like- yeah, I swear, Most taxi drivers, when I see a young taxi driver, I'm like, wow, you've made a career choice. Yeah, I'm like, you something, made a, something's up. You something's made a bold up. career choice here. Because, What's going yeah, on? Because I speak to people and they like, I swear to God, they look at, they look at taxi drivers like McDonald's workers here. Yeah. Like it's like, it's-, it's a, Do they? Because yeah, because it's like you don't need any qualifications except yeah. drive, which you know they expect you to do. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like a throwaway job that they make Oji-sans do. 
Yeah, yeah, basically. It's like, I I think the average age of a taxi driver here is like 70. Yeah, it's like, you're going to retire or you, you know, in Japan, <laughs> you, you, become a taxi you, driver. you either see yourself retire <laughs> or become a taxi driver. It's like- I, It's either a taxi driver or like a construction worker, but not oh, actually oh, doing yeah. construction. Just yeah. like holding the signs and being like, this way, please. Yeah. It's nuts how fast they build houses here. It's like crazy. Oh, yeah, we yeah. had I had a, we had like a whole school be built right next to the apartment I'm living in mm. in the span of the year I was living here, Jesus. which is fucking insane. They, they built a full like three story house next to me in like two months. Fucking yeah. hell. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This yeah, ain't yeah, right. Yeah. No, it, it is crazy. Like, especially like say when you go into like the city or whatever and you haven't been for maybe like a couple of months, mm -hmm. it's okay. surprising the amount of things that have changed. Yeah. Being like, oh, this building was completely different <laughs> two months ago. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just magically here. Yeah. Going back to taxi drivers though, have you ever had any weird or like bad taxi experiences worldwide? Oh yeah, definitely in Europe. I've had some pretty Europe? shitty taxis. Wait, where, where in Europe? France. Oh, oh you, was it taxi, Paris? Taxi and Uber. The worst okay. Uber ride I ever had was in France. Cause I don't know why all the weird taxi experiences I've had have been in LA. Like really? Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 only had like like taxis or Ubers, 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 right? Yeah, I like yeah. when they talk to you in LA. It's no, nice. No Uber tax Ubers in LA. I've always had like a pleasant time. It's 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 weird because I've I've not for like the most part mm. I've had very pleasant experiences with Uber in LA. Yeah, but. There's this one, there's sometimes I get a really odd experience and it's, it's okay. So the oddest experience I've ever had with an Uber in LA, it was uh, during AX time. <clears throat> and we were, all we were, it was me and uh, two other friends. And mm. all we were doing was we wanted to take a taxi to the convention hall. And this was late at night, by the way. Mm. So it was, uh, it, it wasn't like the daytime. It was like, let's say seven, 8 PM. So it was kind of nighttime, the, the sun was down. So we get, we, we call this Uber and this like, this car just rocks up and it's like a fucking decrepit, <laughs> broken car. Like no. I was just like, how, how the fuck has, like how the fuck has this passed like Uber standards? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure that like a dead body had been in there at yeah, one point, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, we were, so we were like, oh, this, this is, this is the Uber. Oh, okay. So we, we were like, whatever. It's like a five, 10 minute journey anyway. It doesn't yeah. really matter that much. So mm. we're getting this taxi driver and immediately he opens his mouth and you can kind of feel that he's he's not all there in the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a yeah he has a screw loose, right? Right. Why? What was he saying? <laughs> so I mean, so at the beginning he was talking about guys. I gotta I gotta, I gotta ask you a favor. Can you can you please give me five stars for my journey? <laughs> all I'm asking for is one five star. I just want a five star. Okay. I just keep I keep getting one stars and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. He's like the he's like the one like kid. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We did it, guys. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, that's an aggressive way to ask for a positive review. But sure, yeah. sure. We'll that is not how you get five yeah, stars. No, no. So, so we sh sure we'll give you a five star. So he starts starts driving to this convention hall, right? Yeah. And he puts it in the GPS. We go to the uh, LA Convention Center, mm -hmm. and then it says to go. It says to go on a turning, right? Yeah. And then it says, please turn right. Doesn't listen. He goes forward. Right, right, and then he goes, and then so it's fine. The GPS corrects itself and goes, "Please turn right at the next turning." Ignores that one, keeps going forward, and in in between him ignoring this GPS and getting further and further away from the convention center, I yeah. might ask because I was like on Google Maps because I was like, "What what what the fuck is this taxi driver doing?" And he he goes and he he keeps talking about this fucking five star and one star rant, right? right. And he he goes, "If if I get another bad review." I'm gonna lose it, man. I'm gonna lose it. You're like hovering the one star. <laughs> and then, and, 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 and he keeps saying that. And I'm just, yeah. I'm just like making eyes because I'm sitting in the front and my teammates sitting in the back, and I'm just trying to make eyes to be like, Yo, oh, me. you're in the passenger yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I'm no. just like, Yo, if he, he, if he pulls the gun, like you, you, you got my back, right? Yeah. Like if, if something happens, you got my back. And so the third time the GPS tells to turn right, and he, he misses it again, yeah. and I'm just like. Shit, man, Some, something's gone wrong. We need to get out of this taxi right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather get another Uber than get further and further away from safety, which is the convention center right, right. and stay one second longer in this taxi. So we're like, don't worry, man. Um, we're close enough to the convention center. We can just, we can just stop here. We can just stop here. And he goes, are you sure? You sure? And so we're just like, yeah, yeah, please, please stop. Please just stop <laughs> I beg here. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get out of the taxi and he, and um, as I'm getting out, he leans over and he goes, you're gonna give me a five star, right? And we go, yeah, 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 yeah. Five star, five star, five star. You promise five star? Yeah, five star. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we'll give you a five star. All right, looking forward to that five star. Drives off, 
instant one star. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I hope you give them a one star. Yeah, I hope it was a one star. Cause that, yeah. people like that, like, I don't care how nice you are. You shouldn't fucking be an Uber driver if you're pulling shit like that. That's, that's no. the equivalent of like getting a pizza delivered and the guy being like, $20 tip, right? You gotta give me at least a $20 tip. $10? No, 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 20. But I, I, I could very much see during that experience why people gave him one stars because I mean, I, I kind of feared for my safety at one point during that taxi ride. I mean, it's like, it's not even a matter of him just like ranting about like, I'm gonna kill a bitch if I get another no, one because, star. Yeah, yeah. It's the fact that he wasn't even going the right way. He, he wasn't going the right way. And like, I, I was like, okay, I, I, at the beginning when he asked for the five stars, like whatever, it's a fucking review. I don't give yeah. a shit. But when he was like, I'm gonna lose it, man. I'm gonna lose it. I was just like, oh shit, man. This that's is fucking terrifying. <laughs> Especially LA. You don't know what yeah. the fuck's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's a bit scary. Isn't yeah. That? yeah. Oh, I've never had yeah. anything man, like that. I, I, yeah, I sadly haven't had any crazy taxi journeys really. Most of them are pretty chill. I don't know. I, I feel like it's really hard to have a bad taxi journey. Although someone gave me a one star once as a customer on Uber and I was confused. Cause really? I don't think I've ever done anything in a car, but right. maybe, maybe I did something that like ruined this man's day and he gave me a one star. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I, was, I, I, was I, I, had, I had one like really memorable uh, Uber ride in LA. Uh, and it was again from where we were staying to the convention center. It was like, yeah. again, another like five, 10 minute ride. Yeah. And uh, and this car, this massive Jeep rocks up. Right. right. There's only two of us. I'm like, okay, that's a bit overkill, but whatever. Okay. Jump in and it's just this like the biggest black dude I've ever seen. Like right. this guy, like not, not not like fat, like built. Like right. this guy's fucking brick <laughs> shit house, right? And he's just like, are hey, you Jory, right? And I'm like, <laughs> yep. And it's like, LA Convention Center. All right, I got you. Like, you know, like super chill, right? <laughs> yeah. And and so the car drives off. Like two minutes later, he's like, hey, yo, you mind if I put on some music? And I'm like, yeah, man, whatever nice you want. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, man, whatever you want. It's all good. And he's like, all right, cool. He turns on something, right? And you, you know, there's a million different artists you can envision a person like that might listen to, right? <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, it's like, you know, it could be any fucking like hardcore hip hop, whatever, yeah. right? Whatever the dude thinks to. <laughs> fucking Enya comes on. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's just like, Hell who yeah. can say where <laughs> Hell you just yeah. have a fucking Terry Crews moment yeah. and you're like white chicks. And I'm just like, and I'm just like I, I, I just start laughing. Like, like I, I couldn't help. I'm like, if I laugh, this man might kill me, but this is just too funny. And I'm like, you like Enya, huh? And he's like, yeah, it helps me to relax. <laughs> like, dude, that's fucking right, amazing, man. man. Yeah, it was fucking great. Full on respect to yeah, the dude. Yeah, it was so cool. It's like, that's the thing though. I didn't know if he was like trying to make me laugh or he yeah. was actually being serious. But either way, I was like, you know what? I can get into this. Uh, this is really cool. You know what? Props to you, man. You might be brick shit ass, but you listen to some Enya, whatever, man. I'd yeah. love to be an Uber driver and just troll people with music. Just oh yeah, 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 I would as well. And if I put my favorite music on, just plays just like- you know, Lucky star opening. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I get an Uber driver, if I become an Uber driver, anime OPs only, man. Yeah, yeah. Anime <laughs> OPs only. I was, I, was, I, was, I was hearing your story. I was like, have I ever given an Uber driver a one star? I don't think so. Cause to no, me- that, that, that was my only one star. To me, it's like five star mm. is like, it encompasses everything from the best experience to my life to you got me there in one piece. Yeah, right. Four star is like, you shit literally broke down. You shit yourself. The, the car stinks. Yeah. yeah, you've killed someone. You you hit a dog as well. All right, four stars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I've just never used a one star. I'm like, didn't even know it was an option. You know, I thought there was just two. There's zero stars as well, right? That you can give. Is I'm that? Yeah, I think so. Because I remember- I don't know. I remember, I remember, what, what, does, what does someone have to do to get zero stars? I mean, like the one, the worst Uber ride that me and Aki went on was in France, in right. Paris. Mm. And this dude Good like- Uber in France? Yeah. Fuck. And this man almost actually got us into a car accident. Yo, French drivers are nuts, dude. Yeah. I, I remember- He I was, was fucking kid, shouting at everybody and like the shittiest, like the kind of like start stop kind of driving <laughs> yeah. where I'm just like, bro, I'm going to be fucking sick all over this car. Yeah. And he got us there and he was like, okay, okay, we're here for, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, all right, man, zero stars. D didn't you get, uh, you got scammed in like Italy, right? Uh, Yeah, almost. <laughs> Cause like in like <laughs> yeah, Italy we, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of European countries, uh, except for like, I don't know, Germany's pretty good for it. I mean, a lot of the, like, I think like Prague's really bad for it and places like that yeah, where yeah. like the taxi drivers mad yeah. scam you. Yeah. And you gotta be like, it sucks. Cause it's the most un-Japanese thing ever, but you just gotta be like, no, I'm not paying that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So give me an actual fare. Yeah, yeah. like you, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So we landed in uh, in Rome Airport, um, and there was just a dude outside of the gate, just okay. being like, "Taxi, taxi." So they know you're tourists. Yeah, because they yeah, know yeah, we're yeah, tourists, yeah, right? Yeah. And we were with Aki's parents as well. So right. Aki's dad was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, sure," you know, because yeah. he's an Uber driver, right? Yeah. And he's like, "How much <laughs> to this hotel?" And he looks at him and he goes, "Uh, 50, 50 euro." And we're like, "All right, whatever." So then he takes us to like the back of the airport. 
where like, the, it's like right opposite where the hangar is. Right. And there's just this van <laughs> and we get into this van and he's like, okay, hold on. I call my driver and the guy fucks off and we're left in this van. And the longer we look around this van, we were like, we're gonna get the fuck out of this van, dude. Like this is, this is not a taxi because then I looked up like, you know, standard uh, Italian like taxi fares to the airport from the hotel. Yeah. And we're like, a normal like taxi ride is like 20 euros. Yeah, every- And every... this dude's charging 50. We're wow. like, we gotta yeah. get the fuck don't, out. Don't fucking listen to those in, in Europe, man. Like they're, yeah. they're, they'll they'll try and get you away. Cause it's always gonna be like an official taxi stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just always go to. So we, yeah. so immediately, like, we didn't even wait for them. We just like grabbed <laughs> our shit, got out, went to the regular taxi stand and we're like, yeah. all right, thank God. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure for like any country, you want to go to the official taxi stand. Yeah. Uh, well, some countries have way stricter rules on taxis than others. And mm. like, even if you get one somewhere random, you're pretty, yes, a lot of countries you'll still get like, I mean, Japan, you get you get it anywhere. You're going to get a, a, the standard fare. Right, 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 right. Same in like uh, Germany and UK as well. I'm pretty sure as well, same thing. But mm. yeah. yeah, it's- uh, Yeah, it's, we learned our yeah. lesson that we were about to get, oh, I, I don't know where the fuck this guy was going to take it. got in someone's up. van. Like, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, what they warn against as you're a fucking kid. Yeah, don't right? get in any yeah. van ever. Yeah, unless yeah. You're it the was one it who's was sus as fuck. Yeah. I, I, but I think like the craziest in terms of driving taxi drivers I've had uh, are probably in China. I remember right. there was this one taxi journey I had in China where it was literally like I was in a crazy taxi game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like this this guy, this guy was full on fucking, he, he might as well have just been like drifting initial D star, right. right? And it was like, he, he was in the middle of fucking Shanghai. And whenever there would be like pedestrians on the road, he wouldn't slow down. He, he was like, he was like tapping his horn like it was a fucking quick time event. You know what I mean? That's how like, like he <laughs> Extra dodge. Yeah, yeah, like he literally had one hand on the steering wheel and one and the other hand on the horn. Cause that's how often he was tapping it, man. Oh my God. I had never like feared for my life. <laughs> you go to Chinese driving school and they're like, right, so roll the window down pre so you get ready yeah. to shout at people. And make sure your hand is always on the middle. Yeah. <laughs> steering is optional. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Man. I mean, you told us about the story before about the, the situation that was not oh, yeah. wiping, right? right? Oh, yeah. I've, I've just had weird taxi jokes. You have, I yeah. say. It's just Asia. Asia seems to have some weird fucking well, that's just That's just Asia and driving rules in oh, general, yeah, right? That's true, that's true. <laughs> Which is why, like we were talking about bad taxi experiences in Japan, for 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 like, I don't think I've had a, even like a bad mediocre experience in Japan. Everything no. everything has just good. got the job done. If anything, the best taxi rides I've had have been in like countryside in, in, in Japan. Like in yeah. Japan, right? Yeah, everything's metered. You don't have to worry about tipping or anything like that. I mean, sometimes Japan has been the only country where I wish tipping culture. Yeah, I wish I was yeah, a thing right? because I've I, I wanted to tip that taxi driver who took me on a tour of different wineries yeah, about same, awesome same. and stuff like that. I'm like, please give like let me let give me, you extra let me money. Give you money. Yeah, we were all fully prepared to. <laughs> like paid the extra because he was taking us around yeah. the scenic right? And he's like, no, 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 it's okay. Standard yeah. price. I'm just like, bro, come on. Like, oh, I want yeah. you to go home tonight and treat yourself. Yeah, exactly. Get, get something nice. Exactly. <laughs> like speaking of like giving like five stars and one stars and stuff like that. Have we ever talked about what like the reviewing mentality is here in Japan? <laughs> just in oh, terms of everything. It's like, I noticed that right away when I moved here. Yeah. yeah. How like nothing on Amazon is above four stars. Yeah. It's, it's not just not on Amazon, like everything on like Google reviews. Google maps, yeah. And stuffing if like hardly anything is above four stars. Yeah. It's, it's like mostly- And if it is, then it's only like two reviews, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and also like they have a, so they do use Google reviews uh, mainly for like restaurants and stuff, but there's also a thing called Tabalog that they, that like a lot of mm, people who yeah. think they're food critics use. And it's, just it's, it's like the Yelp of Japan basically. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's, it's insane. Cause it's like these people review these food restaurants and like three stars for a restaurant is considered good. Yeah. Like that's like, it's done it. It's it's impressive. <laughs> because I remember when I first moved to Japan and whenever you look up restaurants on Google, you'd see like three, 3.5 stars, maybe the occasional four. Yeah. And <laughs> in England or in America, when I see a three star restaurant, I'm Yo. like, Yo. Yeah. But something's gone wrong. If it's this below a four, then I'm just like, something's yeah, off. Like yeah. someone, someone found a rat in their food or something, <laughs> man. Like, I don't know. I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, I don't understand what that is. Like, do the Japanese think that the stars on Google reviews are like Michelin stars? Like, I, 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 I mean, I understand it because they actually, I, I respect that they have a mentality where they literally actually use every star in the review system. Right. Cause it's like the Mao review, right? Where anything below, like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure like- anything Mao below seven is shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure like Mao, Mao users don't realize that five, like under five stars actually exist. Yeah. Um, because it's either like seven if it's good. Um, six is really bad. Six is really bad. Yeah. And like five is the most I, awful anime ever. For like watched. a restaurant, I 
the way I imagine it is like, what would I tell the owner if he was right in front of me now? Right. Like, yeah. would I genuinely sit there and be like, this was a three star experience? Because mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. how, how are you going to do that to the poor guy? He's yeah. trying to run a yeah. business, right? Yeah. Because to me, you know, if I go somewhere, I really like the food, I have nothing bad about it. Mm. How in good faith can I be like, yeah, you don't deserve five stars? Yeah. Because mm. there was nothing wrong with it. Like, this was yeah. exactly what I wanted. Because I got what I needed. Yeah, it wasn't fine dining, it wasn't yeah. crazy, but like there was nothing. That, that's but, the well, thing. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I was gonna say like, that's the thing I wanna ask about these like super harsh Japanese reviewers, right? It's like, what is a five star? Yeah, yeah. It's like, do, what, because, do you want a blowjob from the chef? This, like, is, this is also another thing where like, you, you how, can you judge really a restaurant the same way McDonald's? Yeah, because <laughs> like, yeah, because what I, what, I was, what I was gonna say is even like the fine dining restaurants are the same yeah, star yeah, 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 yeah. And that's because they expect a fine dining experience. So if they get the fine dining experience, that's that's, that's like, standard. That's, that's, that's standard. Normal. You've yeah. done the job. And so that makes me wonder, what the fuck would a fine dining restaurant have to do to get a four or five star, man? It's, it blows my mind. Cause like, like I said, like comparing McDonald's to like a fine dining experience, cause they really shouldn't be on the same scale, mm -hmm. right? Because mm. they're, they're totally different things. Yeah, yeah. Like So when you go to McDonald's, what are you judging about McDonald's? Are you judging the place, the food? What are you judging? Because the food isn't gonna change really. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not gonna be any different. The only yeah. thing that determines a good McDonald's experience or a bad yeah, one is like how fast the food comes see, out. Yeah, this is what I see on Google reviews. I'll see a two star McDonald's and I'll see a four star. And I'm like, what is the difference? <laughs> not a, like ultimately I cannot tell the difference. Yes, it might be dirtier I or whatever. I had three less fries than I ordered <laughs> last. That's, that, that's what yeah. confuses me yeah. because then I'm then I'm also like, okay, so if I rate this McDonald's a five star, uh, what am I rating it a five star on? Am I rating it on a five star because- Compared I have, to other McDonald's? A, a, compared a, to, a, you bigger, know, a, a bigger question is who the fuck is rating McDonald's on Google? <laughs> Who, I, are, who, who, that who are you people? I who is that do boy? That. <laughs> I, I, it must be the, okay, not to be rude, but you know, people who are like, yes, it's my only fine dining experience. <laughs> I, um, I will review every McDonald's I go to. Um, people who call McDonald's a restaurant are the same people who call motels hotels, you know? <laughs> I've noticed that every single like really, really high rated place in Japan, like four or five, four point five or higher, yeah. is normally like an, a, a disgusting wait time to get the food. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because when you get to that star in Japan, I feel like you get like an almost like a, a fandom, like a hype around mm. you. As, yeah, as a, a cold following. Yeah, so then, yeah. and then everyone starts yeah. telling everyone. It's like, yo, yo, this like, has got 4.5 star. Yeah, you gotta yeah. go there early, you gotta yeah. line up. And it's like, well, fuck, now I can't enjoy the place. They gotta make a, a, a three day events reservation. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that as well, where there's, uh, Japan's restaurant culture, especially if something is like highly acclaimed, it always spreads via word of mouth. Yeah. Where the Japanese love lining up. I don't, yeah. I don't get that. I mean, as, they a, love as, a, as a British person, up. I can appreciate a good queue. Uh, but I don't. I, 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 there's, as a British person, I can appreciate a good queue as well, but not to a restaurant. No, you yeah. know what I mean? I can't if, fucking stand queues, dude. Yeah, if I wanna if I wanna go to a good restaurant that's exclusive, please let me book it. Please, yeah. please yeah. don't, I don't want another gacha system. Yeah. I don't wanna line up. I want just to have a booking and a specific time I turn up. Um, or you could be like us and try to book a table at Denny's yeah. And, yeah. and completely fail. Yeah, me and because we, we always eat Denny's before uh, we record a podcast and we had like uh, one of the guests over and we're like, oh shit, that's a lot of people. We might have to book a table at Denny's. So yeah. we were like, which hey, like, Maylene. Which to, to give context, it's like trying to book a table at McDonald's. Yeah, so, so, so Maylene, no so Maylene yeah. called up Denny's and was like, uh, can we book a table for six? And the guy came back and was like, this what is, what is book? This is a Denny's. Yeah. Why are you trying to book a fucking table? Just, just come to the restaurant, please. Man, this is Denny's. <laughs> wasn't it? Wasn't it like that? Like he called it. He called like the manager or something. Yeah. It was just like, like, wait, wait. Yeah. Someone comes back and was like, oh, this is Denny's. We don't do, we don't do reservations. We don't, we don't do reservations. Yeah. This let is me, a let fucking me, Denny's. It's so exclusive. You have to turn up on the day. It's 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 the most polite way you can just say it's a fucking Denny's. Why are you calling yeah. me? Yeah. What the fuck? Wrong with but you. also even like going back to like normal reviews with products, like all the products are like that as well. And like, yeah. if, if you see something with fully five stars on Amazon with over like 20 reviews, you're like, damn, this must be like the shit. Yeah. Because like- Or they're paying for those reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Cause I remember when I was buying a, like going back last week, buying a bed, I could not find a bed over like three stars on Amazon. No, I couldn't either. I, I remember that. Like there was no bed that was above three stars. And I'm like, who, 
how many problems people having with beds. And I would go to the uh, the reviews to read what they were saying. And they were all saying that the build was too long. And that was the problem. <laughs> that just sounds I've, like your problem, I've, I've, bro. I've had, I've had some of the most pedantic reviews they on Japanese so Amazon. They get so iffy with it. I've, I've had like someone one star product because the packaging was bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, product, yeah, yeah. The that's product, a really common problem. Product's completely fine. Yeah. The packaging was a bit off. So they were like one star. Yeah, that's what drives me insane is that they, they almost always review the shit around what you're actually reviewing. Yeah. Like, it's like oh, the delivery man had a bad attitude. <laughs> Oh, like, <laughs> it's bullshit. Like, I if the package is a little beat up, but the thing's totally fine. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you're gonna throw out the packaging anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, as long as I can use the thing I, I need, so what? Like, I, this shouldn't be a blight on the company that sent me it. Like, this is fucking absurd. Yeah. I guess I remember. I guess I brought it up to Chris as well because I was confused. And Chris was telling me that Riotro told him it's something like three is like what you expect, mm, and yeah. it is good, and then five is like above, like above and beyond. Yeah. So it has to go. To get five stars it has to be beyond exception, like beyond right, what you wanted. Yeah. Whereas I think for me, five stars should be like, all right, this is what I paid for. Yeah, you gave yeah, me yeah. exactly what I asked for. No yeah. problems. Five yeah. stars. I don't know. Weird. Weird. I guess it's different Standards cultures. Standards of time. Different culture. How do you guys feel about seasonal products here in Japan? Because you know every country in the world has like seasonal products and stuff. Do but we? I feel. I guess so, yeah. yeah. You know, to, it's just to, not to as heavily extent. advertised. But like Japan take it to the next level. Whereas half the shelf sometimes I feel is yeah. like seasonal products. Yeah. Every Everything is seasonal. Everything is yeah. premium as well. I mean, I, I get it now. I, met, I I remember they would talk about it in the animes. They were like- In the animes. They're like, you don't know the pain until your favorite item has been removed from the combini. Yeah. And I feel that. Because I so, feel that as well. So many items that I just liked are for some reason the the what the items that I specifically like would just randomly get removed <laughs> yeah. from the combini. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'll yeah. be like, I'll be like, oh it'll be back next no, week. No, like, not gonna lie, every time I walk into a combini and I see something is like new, I'm, yeah. I'm just like, oh I grab one of those. You know? Yeah, no. I don't know, cause like- uh, I, I don't want to try it. it. I want to get attached. It, uh, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how <laughs> I feel betrayed. now. To be betrayed. I've been like so many times living in Japan. I go to a company, I try out this new, like, oh, this like new product that's only available for spring. Cause it's like the spring special yeah, or the yeah, winter yeah. special products. Try it, absolutely love it. And then a few months later, it just gone. disappears. Gone, yeah. I'm like, fuck man, I want it now. You've given me a craving <laughs> and you've removed the craving. And now I'm gonna have to wait all year. For it to maybe come back. Yeah, for it to maybe come back. Cause it might not even come back. I hate that when they like bring out like a new strong zero flavor. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, this is way better than the standard flavors. <laughs> Too bad it's only around for two weeks and I'll never see it again once it's gone. Yeah, Cause it's not just like items. Sometimes there's like menu items on, on in like restaurants yeah, as well that yeah. are only available during certain seasons. I mean, I feel the biggest problem with that is that the, the one thing in Japanese, like especially supermarkets and restaurants, they love to do that whole like seasonal premium shit is mm -hmm. with fruits. Oh God, uh, right. we've gone out, we've ranted about fruits. So we've ranted about yeah, fruits, yeah. but like, I remember like, I went to a, I don't remember if it was, no, it was a Royal host. I went to a Royal host and they were doing this like seasonal thing with grapes. Right. Like the green grapes, oh, yeah, like the muskets. I yeah. And I tried a few of them cause I like green grapes. And I was like, oh, this is really nice. Went back the next week and it was gone. I'm like, fucking hell, this is really premium, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it was, I swear it was only on the menu for like three days and it's just gone. <laughs> yeah, I swear they, they, they take like limited time sales yeah. to, to like another level here because yeah. it feels like a lot of things are just very limited it's it's a limited edition something. It's limited edition products. I mean, Even, you know, one can argue that that's like very good marketing. It is very right? good marketing. Like people will look at something premium, being like, "Well, I guess if I can only get it now, I should yeah. get it now." It is it is kind of cool going into a place and just having stuff be new constantly. But then there is also that fact of like, yeah, I did really like this one thing, and you took it away from me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very. It's, sad. it's like the same thing whenever you travel to a new like prefecture or something, and there's every pre like we talked about before, every mm. prefecture has a specialty and yeah. an item you can only get in that prefecture. Every prefecture will tell yeah. you that this is the best rice yeah. in Japan. So Every like, prefecture will tell you it's all the fuck. So same. like definitely living in Japan, I've tried more, like I've gone out of my comfort zone with trying new products and new sweets and mm. new foods and everything. But at the same time, I've just found more cravings that I can't get on a normal basis anymore <laughs> because it's only available from a certain prefecture. Yeah, what was the fucking maple cakes that we bought from- uh, Yeah, the manju that we bought from like Hiroshima. Oh Those yeah. Those were so fucking good. Yeah. But the problem is you can only buy them <laughs> Yeah. in fucking Hiroshima. So it's just like, cool. Yeah. I'm not really a sweet person, but then I like, yeah, we bought those yeah. and I ate one and I was like, fuck, I want to eat all of them. <laughs> and I, I was only, really and pissed I, off that I, I bought the tiny bought, box. Yeah, I only bought a tiny yeah, box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> could, have got, could have gotten the pack of 24, but yeah. instead I got the pack of eight. Cause you never know. Sometimes you go, you go, you try out this new thing. You're like, it's, it's all right. It's, mm. it's mid, it's whatever, right? But sometimes you find that really amazing product and you're like, fuck. But fuck then, it, but then on the contrary, isn't it amazing when you find that one regional thing that you think you're never going to see in Tokyo and then just one random shop sells it. Yeah, fuck like, yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Like I remember like uh, in Tochigi, for example, yeah. they have this thing called lemon milk. Yeah. Which I fucking love. And it's like, a, it was a regional specific thing for the longest time. And I was like, well, fuck, I gotta make a trip up to Tochigi every time I want this. Yeah. So I would always buy it in bulk when I would come back home. Naturally. But of course it doesn't last, right? And then the <laughs> craving comes back and I get fucking regressions of it. <laughs> But then I remember uh, I walked into like a random combini once and they were just selling it. Right. Mm. And it was like fucking, oh, it, it was like fucking El Dorado. You know, it was just like, <gasps> the secret was here all along. <laughs> fucking bought all that shit and brought it back. And I was like, all right, no, put it on Google maps. This is the combini that sells the, the lemon milk. Man, I, I, the, the Sapporo special um, thingy beer. What is it? What's it called again? Sapporo beer? So, no, 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 no. It's, uh, what's the prefecture called? Hokkaido. Hokkaido, Hokkaido yeah. Yeah, I probably forgot for a second there. Yeah, Hokkaido, the Sapporo beer tastes way better when they have like the the Sapporo, actual Sapporo beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It tastes so good. I wanted to bring so much back, but it's heavy. It's it's Does it actually make a difference though? I genuinely think it tastes really? much better. Yeah. It's weird. I, th I think Sapporo in Japan taste worse than I remember it tasting abroad. I don't know, it's 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 weird. It, maybe it's because I have it way more often now, but when I had Sapporo like mm. on tap somewhere else, I was like, oh, this is so much better than the beer that we, that the other oh, beer yeah, that we yeah. have. But, but I think it's because you're comparing it to other beers, right? Like I remember Asahi tasting infinitely better in Australia. Yeah, now here. it tastes shit. Now it tastes I like don't shit. know why. Yeah, Asahi does but now bad. I'm more scared to go back to Australia and have the shit beer in Australia. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. if I think Asahi is mid now, which used to be like God tier before. Yeah. I, I don't want to drink a VB, right? Like I yeah, feel like yeah. I'm going to throw up drinking that shit. God, I can't imagine going back and going like drinking a Carling again. No. Oh God. <laughs> you know, so they, they'll, Carling is like, piss water in the UK. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of the worst beers. And there'll be sports bars in Japan that are like, huh, we're partnered with Carling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We sell Carling and Carlsberg here. I've seen that before. Cause- yeah. uh, Budweiser. Yeah, yeah Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen like uh, special special restaurants, they sell like this Thai beer called Singer beer. Yeah. And it's like in, in Thailand, it's like the dirtiest, cheapest beer you can get. <laughs> like they don't even put it on tap. They put it in like, they put it in like a can. You know oh, what I mean? The That's tinnies, kind of beer. The tinnies are the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. worst. And in, in Japan, they, they're on a menu, like 500, 500 yen for a little can of Singer beer. Yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, Fresh from that? Thailand. Yeah, it's like, who is gonna go to Japan and be like, oh, we have exclusive Heineken <laughs> in bottle, 700 yen, please. It's like, what? No. Yo, yo, I've, Heineken in Amsterdam is yeah, fucking great. Okay, great. Heineken in Amsterdam is good. Well, but yeah. beer at wherever it's brewed is the best. Well, yeah. It's <laughs> like, you know, I had a fucking, uh, uh, oh my God, Blanking here, the Irish one. Uh, Guinness. Guinness, yeah, Guinness, 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 Guinness in Ireland. Yeah, Guinness in Ireland is like- Guinness in Ireland does hit different. Yeah, it's, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. But then I had a Guinness here on tap. Why and would I'll, you do that? Because they were having it on tap. So I'm like, I was curious. I was like, all right, well, Guinness in Ireland is so good. <laughs> I do that every time yeah. as well. Yeah, I was like, oh, they have Guinness on tap here in Japan. Let me Why see. Why do you do it just to get hurt because all over because, again? because you hold out the hope, right? Yeah. You hold out the hope of may maybe this is the one. Yeah. Maybe this is the place it's that like can you, recreate. Yeah, it's like this pub might be the SSR pool. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's like, exactly. it's like maybe, this might be the one. Maybe this is the one. And every time I get disappointed, yeah. it's, it's never like, going to be uh, the one. It's no. never going to be the one. <laughs> I was like, every time I see like Irish pub in Tokyo, I was like, yeah. is that the one? <laughs> is that the one place that yeah. I can go? It's cause it's not even in Tokyo, it's worldwide for me. And like every time I see a Guinness oh. on tap, cause it has to yeah. be on tap, never, never that can shit. Oh no, no, no. But like it has to be on tap. Cause I'm like, it's on tap. Maybe maybe, maybe this is the one. Maybe, yeah. maybe they figured out the secret and uh, no, I'm still waiting. If, if, if anyone in the world has ever tasted the Guinness outside of Ireland that tastes as good as in Ireland. They're delusional if they Please, think so. please yeah. hit me up. I need to know. I need and to know I will where literally that is. Travel to that fucking place to why try not, it. Why not just travel to Ireland, Garn? Oh, yeah, like, I'll just go to Ireland at that point. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to see if there's any place just, outside of Ireland. It doesn't travel well, you know? That's the sad truth of it, Garn. It's you like know? kangaroo as well. Like that shit does not travel. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that staying in Australia, actually. <laughs> Dude, I, I had a kangaroo steak here in Japan at an Outback Steakhouse of all fucking why? places. Yeah. Just cause I was curious. And I was like, man, this shit does not travel. I, I found that out on that day that <laughs> kangaroo does not travel. You, you know what's also bizarre? Uh, when I was in uh, Hokkaido, I was at a train station and it was like 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's so many people drinking beer in the station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like just like 
everyone. Just like, chilling. Every, every kind of like, you know, uh, group you can imagine, like young girls, old men, young men, they were all just chilling in the station, just drinking a Sapporo beer. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is weird. It's just right? water time. <laughs> Everyone's just drinking beer at like 11 a.m. What the fuck? Yeah, like it's in the train station. Like yeah. the, the like public waiting area. It's just yeah, so bizarre. It's like that in Okinawa as well, but instead of beer, it's awamori, which uh. is essentially just really fucking strong. Sh it's basically Okinawan vodka. That's the only way to yeah. describe it. Because I, I forget sometimes about the public drinking laws drink here, so which, much, yeah. Yeah. which you can drink publicly, publicly here because I, I feel like I, I didn't expect to see so many people drinking in the daytime in Japan. Mm. Like I I get surprised when I see an izakaya open because I'm like, who the fuck is going to an izakaya at like yeah. 12 a.m. Oh, yeah, you'll see them and they'll be drinking a bevy. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Like, okay. I, never, I never thought that the, the concept of like lunchtime beer was a thing here until yeah. I saw it for myself. Yeah. I was like, wow, they're actually having lunchtime beer. And it's always, it's, it's like, you, it's the people you don't expect because it's always like the old people, right? Yeah, yeah, the old yeah. retired people are just like, hey, let's just have a lunchtime yeah, beer. crack open a beer <laughs> at like 12 in, p.m. To be fair, in the UK, it's, it's all the old people do as well. Yeah, yeah, If you ever true. go to Weatherspoons at like midday, you'll always see the same old people <laughs> downing pints yeah. at like 12 and you're like, it's okay, they'll, they'll, they'll be asleep by four anyway. So yeah, it doesn't true. matter. Like speaking of like little seasonal and re regional stuff that you can only get in Japan, mm. Has there been anything you've like any little products or anything you've missed from home or from any other country at all that you like, like actively get a craving for? You know oh, I have gone. Man. I know you have, Connor. Oh, my, my parents shipped out pot noodles to me. Oh, because I do like the ramen <laughs> cup noodles they have here. I die. Like, I die a little inside whenever I hear Connor say that. Yeah. Because <laughs> right, it's not. I don't. I'm not saying that the pot noodles in the UK, which would be on screen, uh, are better than the ones in Japan. I don't think that. I think right. the Japanese ones are superior in every way. But yeah. there's something familiar and comforting about the it's other It's nostalgic, right? And also it's very spicy, which uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the yeah, non, that's, none that's of That's hard to come by yeah. here, yeah. Yeah, it's really spicy. It's good shit. I love it. And so my parents are Christmas mm. because, you know, I. You know, ever since you start making your own money, it's like, right, well, I, I buy everything I want for myself. Right. Yeah. So they're like, what can we get you? And I'm like, well, you can get me something I can't get myself. Right, right. And not love, <laughs> none of that. Um, <laughs> send me pot noodles from the UK. And they're yeah. like, pot noodles? I'm like, yes, please send me pot noodles. Right. So they did. Yeah, I, I always I always ask my parents to I send me up. like, uh, like, Australian sweets and stuff. Tim like Tams, perhaps? No, Tim you Tams. can get Tim Tams here. Oh, they suck anyway. No, what? You don't like Tim Tams? <laughs> they're, they're overrated. Oh, I, 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 every Australian Big swears. Just, uh, every, every Australian, uh, Australian uh, swears by them like it's like national pride or something. It is national pride. <laughs> I'm just like, fucking awesome. It's just, just a biscuit. Oh man. my God. <laughs> get out of here. Just, I, just, it, I, I think biscuit is like the most underwhelming sweet. Like it's it's it hard, it's never satisfying. It is. Like soft cookies are way better than hard cookies yeah. as well. Like I, what do you no, think? I get, I get that, I get that. But like, we also have like, wait, so do you guys consider Tim Tams to be hard cookies? No, biscuits. Biscuits. Oh, oh hard biscuits, right? Yeah, they're hard yeah, biscuits. Yeah. They're not soft what's, biscuits? What's, what's, what's the difference? Cause that's a soft biscuit to us. Cause we have these things called- What are you called, eating rocks for hard biscuits? We have these things called Anzac cookies, which are literally rocks. Like I don't want to have to worry- Kids break teeth yeah, trying to eat these. I don't want to have to worry- a, That's not a cookie. If, if I have to worry about breaking <laughs> it is a cookie. my- If I have to worry about breaking my goddamn teeth, it's yeah. not a fucking cookie. Anzac biscuits are fucking- Like Australians <laughs> watching this one know, Anzac biscuits are fucking awesome. It just sounds like a health hazard. With yeah, that. It is a health hazard. It just sounds it's, like an- <laughs> It's like chewing, it's like, dude, you can work out your jawline eating this fucking cookie. Like it's so tough. We had these growing up. I used to have these in the UK, obviously, but they're called digestives. Did you like those? Suggestives? No. Di digestive, digestive biscuits. biscuits. Dige digestives, yeah. they're called. They're, they're, I, I realize that now is that's not appealing at all. I realize that's not a very fitting yeah. name. Like, <laughs> they were awful. I never liked that. What the fuck's a digestive biscuit? It's, it's, really it's just a, like the most biscuit. plain biscuit you can get, and it's got like a soft layer of chocolate covered on and, top. And the chocolate is shit chocolate, yeah. and the biscuit is like just like, dry. Like a milk biscuit or? No, 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 no. It's like a wheat biscuit. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. A yeah. wheat biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, that doesn't look good at all. Um, yeah, because well, you're supposed to like it dip with it with tea and uh, coffee and stuff like but that. But then sometimes but you dip it in your hot tea and it falls apart and your fucking right. tea's ruined. And yeah, but you can do that with a Tim Tam as well. I don't want to put any, yeah, but that, I, that's I didn't too, that's do that. That's too much chocolate to put in the tea biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. There, there needs to be like a perfect chocolate ratio, chocolate to biscuit ratio, because Tim Tam's like covered in chocolate, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, if, if, you, if the chocolate starts melting on your fingers as you dip it in the tea, that's, that's like you've never had You've never done a Tim Tam straw before? It's like a thing that you do in Australia. So you ever done a flip flop kangaroo? Here's some, here's some Australian <laughs> culture for you. All right, so you get a Tim Tam. So it's like, usually you do it with a cup of tea or a cup of yeah. coffee or whatever you prefer. You get a Tim Tam, you bite both ends off. Right. And then you use it as a straw to suck up your tea and coffee. 
and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> is this some down under joke? Uh, what, us us what, in the up uh, and over don't get? <laughs> like what, 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 what the, the fuck? Up and over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When, do we, when is something a culture? And when is it just like stupid? Like, <laughs> it's what we do. That's what some people do. I did it once and I was like, yeah, that's cool. I don't do it every time, but <laughs> just a little thing you can do. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, we I, got to find our own fun in Australia, right? There isn't a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. But yeah, I've like, I don't like biscuits at all. No, like, it's, it's definitely like the worst. I, I'm not really fond of cookies either. I think cookies are everywhere. Maybe it's just because UK cookies are just shit. Okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no it's not. UK's <laughs> cookies everywhere. Wait, 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 wait. Come wait. on. The, the, the fucking <laughs> Uh, store brand cookies are always shit. Yeah. Fresh cookies out the oven when they're like, they need soft, to be soft, soft and soft. chewy. I don't know. Okay, my favorite cookies I can get are actually um, Subway cookies. Oh, oh okay. okay, yeah, they're Subway bomb. cookies I are fucking great. Yeah, they're bomb. they're bomb. You like the ones where you can pull it easily Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where yeah, you, yeah. Where you, if if, if it's not fresh out the yeah. oven, what I hate is if I bite on a cookie and it crunches. Shit goes everywhere. Yeah, and, and if, crumbs if, annihilate if, the if, room. If I have crumbs, then I'm like, this I, This is a shit cookie. This is just a biscuit with extra steps. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, biscuit with attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like my cookies to be gooey. Yeah. I like it to be soft. Not gonna lie, I've never thought that deeply about I a biscuit have, in my life. Have, no, no, because you know, you grow up in the UK, you're watching American cartoons. And for some reason in American cartoons, cookies are like, like, I don't know, the 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 thing that fueled the world for the kids' generation. <laughs> right. Cookies were what the like the Mayans used to to yeah, yeah. barter and negotiate. I, they these kids shows made cookies to be like the godsend of like everything. So when I you know you grow up and you can start buying your own things, you're like, well, yeah, I mean, cookies are the best treat. And you start having them, you're like, wait, these are kind of. It's kind of shit. Really. It, it was yeah. it was always like you know that mythical cookie jar, right? That yeah, like yeah, no one yeah, had yeah, yeah. Jar, I didn't have it in you know. my house, so I assume everybody else yeah, has it was, one. It yeah. was just like cookies were like insanely like valuable. You know, kids yeah. were dying fi fighting wars <laughs> on the playground. Like currency, <laughs> yeah, literally. It's you know, because like for me, whenever I get like baked cookies or someone who cooks fresh cookies, there's there's like as as soon as it comes out of the oven, the fucking timer yeah. starts. Because when, <laughs> when it's dry, it's shit. Yeah, exactly. Because you because you gotta be like one hundred percent cookie speed, right? I, I gotta go. I gotta like enjoy this before it starts hard. And it's like, right. as soon as it starts hardening, it's one of the few objects in the world where moist is a positive adjective. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, I get that. I, get that. <laughs> I feel bad when people like make cookies like the day before and they bring them. They're like, you want to try one of my home baked cookies? I'm like, I could. I yeah. could try one of your home baked cookies, yeah. but I will be sorely disappointed. It's like those and brownies. Like yeah. if, if I have like a dry brownie, um, it's it's like a it's like the limp dis a drowny, dicks of brownies. A brownie does need to be a little like like wet. Neat. Yeah, yeah, moist. It needs to be, yeah, moist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If it all that just fucking crumbles apart the moment I touch it, I'm like, yeah. well, the structural it, integrity of this brownie is appalling. If it's flaky, then it's it's if too it, dry. If it's not making like a sound as you chew it, you know? If it's not making that sound, then it's a bad brownie. You feel me? I can't be the only one who thinks that. No, no, you. It, it needs to be like ASMR levels of like yeah, it does. lip smacking did in you, your it ears does. for it, it to does. be a good did, brownie. Did your supermarkets in Australia like have bakery sections where they would bake things? Yeah, 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 yeah. we did. They used to like in the UK, to be fair, they used to make pretty fucking good cookies and brownies. Do you, remember, do you think so? Wait, wait. They, Sainsbury's. Like Sainsbury's would have their own bakery. Okay, just, say, okay, I've I, I've actually got I've actually like I know the best ones. It goes Sainsbury's, <laughs> then Tesco's, then Co-op. Because those those do, they, do these all sound like just made up names? Yeah, they do. These, <laughs> are, these <laughs> are the supermarket chains in the UK, and, yeah. and all of them have their own bakery. And yeah. like you get like four fat ass cookies for a pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. They were always like freshly baked on the day and soft, and oh, they were fucking good. They were good and cookies. Then, you could buy the like packaged ones, but like why would you do that when you could go and get like a full box of brownies, like yeah. sixteen little chunks yeah. for like a quid. Right. Like, no, and they're, and they're no freshly brainer. baked, right? Freshly yeah. baked, yeah. really fucking good. Yeah, that sounds way better. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what I do miss that I didn't think I would. Dairy milk chocolate. Yeah, I like dairy milk chocolate. Mm. Like, because I thought whenever I came to Japan on holiday and stuff, I was like, I was like man, the, no, the chocolate no, here is bomb. No, I fucking love the taste no, of chocolate here. And then after living here a year, <laughs> I just feel like I've really, some, some, something, Something homely no, about they, dairy they, milk. They've taken the American way of making uh, chocolate. It does uh, taste like American because chocolate. Because what they've done is instead of having more milk and making it like a richer taste, they're like, hmm, let's just substitute with more sugar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you get this kind of weird chemically taste, which I like Hershey's does. Hershey's tastes like just in my mind, like question marks with sugar. 
Like, <laughs> it's like, I don't know what this tastes like. It doesn't taste like chocolate. It tastes like a made I up. am not a fan of Hershey's at like, all. I American actually, chocolate does not taste like chocolate. I, I, no. I used to like really like Hershey's. Or really? like, I, I, I still kind of do. Whenever whenever I'm like in the UK or whenever it's, I- It's not as rich, so you can eat more of it. Yeah, because what Hershey's tastes like, it tastes like cooking chocolate. Right, and I don't know mm. why. Oh, a, like the melting chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why as a kid I fucking loved cooking chocolate because mm. I it just it just like well, it's normally for poorer quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's, <laughs> it's poorer quality. But as a kid, I just like anytime we'd like cook chocolate, I just like always have to dip my finger in it and oh like, yeah, give, of give, course, give it a of quick course, taste. Course, that's yeah. that's what Hershey's tastes like. So as an adult, eating Hershey's like brings me back to being a kid. And mm. then I have two bars and I'm just like, okay, this is actually just shit chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> like, Americans, Nostalgia like, gone, it's just shit chocolate now. Like Americans, man, you've it rough, man. I know we clown you guys all the time, but like your chocolate is fucking awful. Please like import some like milka or dairy like milk Cadbury. or something. Yeah, Cadbury. Uh, Cadbury milk chocolates are the fucking best. Yeah, yeah Cadbury's, uh, dairy, Cadbury's is dairy milk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't remember. I think it's owned by an American company now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it used to be. I mean, uh, a lot of the British chocolate's really good. I think that's one of the things we actually did pretty well. British like, chocolates? Uh, yeah, I think ch chocolate in the UK is really fucking good. I think mm. chocolate all over, all over Europe. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, 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 like, pretty you damn guys, You guys get it from Europe, that's like, why. Honestly- it gets, it gets hella bougie and then like the rest of Europe and like- Like Swiss chocolates and stuff. Swiss, okay, Dude, Swiss, Swiss, Swiss chocolate is fucking great. It's yeah. great, but is it like, it's like seven bucks sometimes for yeah. like a small It's great piece. and I can, no. like, but every time I have a bite of Swiss chocolate, I can feel the chocolate entering my veins. Yeah, like, yeah it's, like, it's a it's very so intense. so rich. Yeah. Yeah. Depends, cause I like, I think my favorite like big brand Swiss chocolate is like Lint. I do Lint. like yeah. Lint. Yeah, Lint's really good. But you, but you gotta like sit down after you have a bite. You're like, no. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's fucking great. You're it's like, like doing a pint of cocaine. Yeah. It, it fucking yeah. is. You go on a journey. When, yeah. when, when you take that one bite, man, you just like, it needs to be like, okay, when when like the truffle inside is just like the perfect consistency. When, no, 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 no. You, when you bite off the hard <laughs> shell and it just the soft truffle and it's just like, ah, oh, it's beautiful. I'm, I, my mouth is watering just describing yeah, it. I face, fucking man. love a good Ferrero Rocher. Oh, Ferrero Rocher. Oh my yes. God. God damn. <laughs> Ferrero Rocher is fucking amazing. Ferrero Rocher milkshakes are like the best thing ever. Ferrero Rocher's milkshake. Rocher milkshake. Yeah, um, can, like, ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Ice cream is fucking you can, great like, as well. You can like, grind it into like a milkshake. It's fucking amazing. Oh, like DIY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Some some places do it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That sounds fucking Also, I, I feel like I increase a class whenever I say Ferrero Rush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the most poshest word I've like, I, I can think of off the top of my head. It just sounds so good. I can like, feel the monicle forming on my <laughs> yeah, eye. I, 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 do, I do need a top hat every time I say <laughs> yeah. Ferrero Rush. Ferrero Rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I feel like, you you don't you experience Swiss chocolate. You don't eat Swiss chocolate. No. You know what yeah. I mean. You eat British chocolate. Like it's something you can just eat. You know what I mean. The Swiss don't do drugs. They do chocolate. Yeah. I don't know, man. I sometimes I like buy like a pack of lint, and I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm having I'm having a good you, day. Can today. you eat all of the like lint package in one go? Because I can't. Like, because I feel like I need a palate cleanser every time I have like a rich chocolate. I'm like, give me the the wine to go with it yeah. to, so, to <laughs> empty the flavor. So, yeah, I have I have a like a problem where I have, I have one. It's enough. You have a sweet tooth though, don't? You. I do not have a sweet tooth. Actually. Bullshit, you do. I don't. I you actually. Are, you always I, snack I'm on the, sweets. I'm the only in Japan, actually. Only in Japan. Really? Because here's here's the thing. I I hardly ever mm -hmm. used to snack. I either I either was that guy in England who would eat a tub of ice cream or not. Go, I'll go without sweets for like two weeks. Oh. Like I, I I there was no in between for me. Mm. Like only in Japan no, have no. I ever like kind of embraced snacking culture. And that's just because there are so many different kinds of sweets and snacks here. Yeah. I'm like kind of want to try something every I, time. I used to be a sweets guy back in Australia, but then when I moved here, I realized that Japan's snack or like confectionery section, mm -hmm. there's a lot more savory shit yeah. that just tastes way better than the sweet shit. Yeah. So I'm just, I always just go for the savory shit now. It's easier to make something that's tastes good that's sweet though. You just fucking put a shit ton of sugar. Yeah, because if, you, if <laughs> yeah, but I also feel gross after eating yeah, it too, yeah. right? Because if you ever come to my house in England, if you ask for like anything that's not savory snack, I'm probably not going to have it. No, because if that. I do have a lint like a like a chocolate or like a lint box, that's mm. gone in like a few hours most <laughs> of the time. That's because I rarely buy. But when I'm do, I'm like I'm like super craving it. I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't had a Ferrero Rocher in like probably like a year and a half. Maybe do two they years. sell them in Japan? Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never see that. Because in, in if, the, if you go to like a uh, uh, like international shops, mm, like they'll have it. Yeah. Oh, because like in in the UK, that was like the not expensive. It's like the the if you want to look expensive but not actually <laughs> spend too much money, Ferrero Rocher's with the. the oh, see, like I for. never got Ferrero everything Rocher. about Ferrero Rocher just looks fucking. Bosh, it looks man. fancy. It sounds fancy, but the only thing that isn't fancy is like the price tag. I mean, they're expensive, but compared to like Lint or Lenore or something like that, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, no. I don't. I've had some super super. You, you talk about Lint and Ferrero Rocher being like. I've really like deep taste. I've had like- Ferrero
So yeah. I've, I've had some like the super expensive chocolates are, are the ones I feel like you have to do. You, you're going you're going on a fucking battle with taking yeah. a bite out of this. Ferrero share is like the premium economy. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, like it's have you had a little bit better than normal. Yeah, have you ever had like truly like you gone to like a specialist chocolatier yeah, shop they, kind of shop? Yeah, yeah but they, they, one of those they, chocolates. They always give you like the super intense like dark chocolate because yeah. that's like yeah, the yeah, purest yeah. form. Yeah. And then I eat this and I'm like, yeah, it tastes like fucking ash. <laughs> like, like, do, but do you like dark chocolate? Though? I do, but there's a limit. Like, right? Uh, like, it's like ninety percent cacao. Yeah, because yeah, like, you'll go to play yeah. these like chocolatier places, and they'll yeah. be like, "It's amazing, isn't it?" And it's like eighty yeah. percent like co uh, cocoa, yeah. Or, yeah. and then you're like, oh. "Yeah, that's great." It's good. <laughs> Sometimes I have like one bite, and I'm like, "Oh, I gotta fucking battle this." I need, like, I'm having yeah. a fucking battle in my mouth, like trying to get this down. Like, <laughs> like, I get oh. it if I was having like an espresso or something to go with it. Like, yeah, perfect. Yeah. They're, they're like they'll wash each other out, and you know, I'll, I'll feel happy. But when you have one one bite of super dark chocolate, yeah. this fucking stays with you for the rest of the day. Yeah, it does. You like yeah. think you can't, you cannot get the taste out of your mouth. Yeah. I, and I don't want to feel like I've just bleached my mouth. I've never thought about having chocolates with like anything else actually. Really? It's with coffee, it's like the best. Yeah, you gotta have it with the coffee. I, I don't eat chocolate unless it's with a hot drink. I don't know, I, I find it, because for me like coffee and tea, I just like by itself. I've never tried, because if you dip something into the tea, that that kind of like changes the no, taste no, I don't in my dip opinion. It. I eat it. You so eat, you eat it, it and with then it. you drink like, it. It's like a palate cleanser. Yeah, Cause yeah, like yeah. if yeah. your mouth's too chocolatey, you can't keep eating more chocolate. Might, yeah. I might want to give that a go then because yeah. I've this only- I never thought to combine the two. <laughs> no, because I, I never, yeah, I never thought about it. Chocolate and tea. <laughs> <coughs> like unspeakable. Like no, because chocolate has always been a snack for me. Why that do you I have think that at a restaurant, at like a fancy restaurant, there'll be like coffee and dessert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, coffee, God, and, like, coffee and chocolates. <laughs> yeah, because they go together. It's like, no. I thought- God's, I thought like, God's just like, wow, I didn't I thought you were supposed to eat all the chocolate and then down your tea. <laughs> Are you telling me chocolate's meant to be just a snack and not just- <laughs> A dessert, because that's that. I guess that's the way I see all chocolates. Right, like it's, right. It's, it's not a like I said. I don't. I, I never used to snack. It's like it was my dessert. I guess it was. It was like a full on. I'm either committing like it's to very this. Very sad to have a chocolate bar and be like, ah, yes, dessert. My dessert. <laughs> my dessert. <laughs> yeah, because like, I I actually like didn't start enjoying wine because. As a kid, or like as as like a teenager, I would say wine was like the one alcohol that I just couldn't get into. Yeah, same, I, mean, I, okay, I didn't understand why people liked wine, and then I remember the first time I tried red wine or good red wine with good steak, and it was just like an instant mm. eye opening moment for yeah. me, man. I mean. Let's be honest. You can't you can't really enjoy wine unless you have a bit of a disposable income, really. <laughs> and I don't know about you growing up, but parents were like, "Think that's a waste of no, money." No, but which even, is fair I mean, enough. Unless, even, unless you're here, right? even before, whenever you know you'd go out with like your family or your like one of your rich, mm. you know, relatives, or whatever, mm. and you try this try this good expensive wine, and the only thing you can think of this isn't fucking worth eighty bucks. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and to be honest, I still think that. I still think any like. I'm probably making some sommelier cry here, but I've never tasted like a wine beyond above than let's say 50 bucks that's I that has tasted a lot greater than some of like the best wines you can get. Yeah, like price. a $60 wine tastes the same to me as like a $200 wine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I, mean, I mean, I've had like, you know, you can buy uh, wine at convenience stores here for like <laughs> as cheap as four bucks. It's, it's not and good I, wine though. It's, it's not good wine. I can, tell, I can taste the difference between that, but like the more expensive quote unquote wines that you can buy like a 7-Eleven is like a thousand yen. And those are actually perfectly fine. Like I've had a few of those where I'm just like, you know what? This is actually pretty good for a thousand yen wine. It's, I don't know. It's good for combini wine. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah. for combini wine, it's the best yeah. you're gonna get. Shout out to alpaca wine, which is like this, that alpaca wine is like, what, what's like the, an equivalent of like Echo the cheap Falls. wine? Echo Falls. UK, alpaca wine is called. like the Echo Falls of Japan. In, in the UK, it's a, it's the cheapest wine brand. Like a box wine? Uh, it's, it's, it's there is the a box it's version, the uni, yeah. but there is- Oh, the uni wine. It's about it's, four pound for a bottle. Right, and right. And it's like always flavored like a kid's drink. <laughs> it's like lime and, and grapefruit. And it, and it just tastes like antifreeze with grape hint. Yeah, we, we uh, have that in Australia. It just tastes like washing detergent, grape flavored. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> awful. Like, it's fucking gross. But you know what else I'm grateful for? What? Our patrons. Oh my, God. oh my God. They're awesome. Look at wow. all of them. Shout out to that guy on the screen right they now. They like eating chocolate and wine. I bet they, they hate, do. They hate hard biscuits. This guy's a they sommelier. They think biscuits mid. <laughs> <laughs> they hate taxi rides. <laughs> Thank you just, for the- Just talk about everything we talked about. And they're like, yes, yeah, so like, can else you relate? Talk, they what hate else we anime about? themed cafes. Yeah, yeah, they oh, hate yeah. that. Yeah, we did they, start off on that, didn't we? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for joining us today on The Trash Taste. Go on, do you want to do again, our outro? Again, contractually, because we have to say it. Thank you to G Fuel. <laughs> 
for sponsoring this episode. Cool. Um, hey, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash trash taste. Also follow us on Twitter and subreddit. And uh, for audio listeners, go over to our Spotify. And yeah, Joey literally said everything that I needed to say. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for taking Do the, the outro. Thank you for taking the host spot from me, Joey. <laughs> so I guess- I've been we'll... your host, Connor. Fuck! Uh, I've nice been your episode. host, Joey, as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guys, I wanted to say the outro. <laughs>